Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to Let's Talk Just Radio. everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Talk Jets Radio. This is one of your hosts, Tyson Roush. Draft is a week away, and it's exciting. At Talk Jets Radio, Instagram and Twitter, Let's Talk Jets Radio on YouTube. And we got plenty to talk about predictions, all-time predictions. So we will bring on Mr. Primetime. Mr. Primetime, how are you, man? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm doing great, dude. I'm doing great. We're, uh, what, a week away from the draft? And it's just – it's exciting because now you can ignore all the mock drafts. You can ignore all the bullshit and just kind of just be excited about the draft and the whole process. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's clear they're taking Justin Fields at two. So, I mean, let's get it. Yeah, so before we bring on Mr. Ho- Mr. Hollywood, who, who claims he's going to create chaos, which I have no idea why yeah. because it's not going to be a chaotic show, prime time, the last 25 years – your three favorite picks on offense, draft picks. I love when you brought that topic up today. So, yeah, I mean, the, the three guys that I put out there were Lavernius Coles, Jericho Cotchery, and Leon Washington. And I loved all three of those picks because when was the last time that we had dogs like that, especially in the, in the mid to late rounds? None of those guys were, you know, first or second round picks. Yep. Um, you know, Cotchery, I think he was round three. Leon Washington, if I remember right, was round four. Um, and yep. Coles. Was he round three also, or is he later than round three? I forget exactly. I think he was but, round um, three, wasn't he? I think he was. And, yeah, I mean, right off the bat, those guys were just, you know, they, they were never, you know, for Coles and Cotri, they were never number one wideouts. I don't think Coles, he had a couple of years where he was up there. You know, some of them were with Washington, unfortunately. But, you know, they just, they came right on the scene. And, you know, Coles' big moment, his uh, first catch, uh, the first touchdown, the Monday Night Miracle, um, you know, and Cotchery, you know, some of the, the catches that he's had over the years, especially in the playoffs against the Patriots, they were just, they were, they were big game players and they were just hard nosed guys. They got after it. Leon Washington, one of the best special teams players we've seen. Like he can throw uh, Brad Smith in there too. So, you know, I like, I like yep. looking beyond more of the, you know, the, the first round guys. Yeah, I'm in the same boat as you are, man, where it's like, it's easy to say you can be like, oh, well, you got Keyshawn, you got Chad Pennington, you got the Brickishaw and Mangold. I mean, Mangold would still make my list because he's just a phenomenal center. And the brick shot, I get those. But like you mentioned, yeah. those other guys, we, we tend to forget guys from years past that they drafted that were actually very good. And those, like Kotcher was a huge fan favorite, Leon Washington, all those different guys. Then when you look at defense, defense gets real fascinating for me. Who do you have on defense? Defense is tough because, I mean, I feel like you have to go with the, the best player that the franchise has arguably ever had in Darrell Rivas. Um, you could put Hitman Harris in there, you know, probably our best middle linebacker in team history. But then you have so many other guys who kind of had like the, the same career trajectory with like Mo Wilkerson, um, Leonard Williams, Jamal Adams, where you loved them the first couple of years, even though Sheldon Richardson, you could put him in there. And then they kind of, you know, they, they, they either fell off, they got suspended, they got traded, whatever. Um, you can even put Sean Ellis in Mo there. Lewis. Uh, yeah, Mo Lewis, John Abraham for a couple of years until he got traded also. Um, it, it's tough for, for defense. Yeah, he had a couple of years, but the way he fell off, you know, especially as the team got good, he just he just got soft. Yeah, and it was funny because it, it was funny because some fans were like, "Oh, well, Victor Green and Wayne Corbett." I'm like, they were actually undrafted. Like some of these guys were actually undrafted. Yep. Yep. And then they go, it's like, "Oh, Curtis Martin." I'm like, "Well, Curtis Martin came from the Patriots." Like, so it's yep. interesting to see the names that were coming out. But it's a fascinating thing when you look at it because, for me, the defensive guys <laughs> jumped off the board. Like, you can name so many guys on defense. And then on offense, you kind of got to really think about it a little bit, and that's kind of an indictment on the Jets, isn't it? Like, that's kind of like – that just shows you all the problems we've had over the years. No, and, and like I just said, even some of the – a good percentage of the guys on defense, they were gone. You know, they didn't have a second contract with the Jets, unfortunately. You know, some of the better players. Um, and even Darrell Rivas, you know, he was eventually traded. John Abraham was traded. You know, and, and a lot of the other guys, they just, you know, they got injured or you know, went down a bad path, so – you know, it's it's just a bad history of drafting altogether, which is why, you know, we haven't really done much. You know, why we haven't had a home playoff game in 19 years. 
Yeah, so there's a lot of, you know, and then like a lot of prominent guys that we all like, like even like the Kevin Mawai, that wasn't like a draft pick. You know, a lot of that offensive line with the Rex years, those guys weren't draft picks. Those are guys we all like kind of brought along. So it just yeah, shows Bart you Scott, like Jim how, Leonard. yeah, look at like a lot of, a lot of big time contributors and those, and those winning teams weren't draft picks. They were all guys we brought in free agency. It just shows you, oh, yeah, dude, there's a lot of them, dude. So a lot of the corners, I mean, like you look at Camardi. You know, look at all this. It's just – it's a long so, list. So you're saying then we should go about, through free agency, basically. No, then you got Braylon Edwards. You got Santonio Holmes. You got all of these guys. You got Jason Taylor, LaDainia Tomlinson. I mean, should we continue? Yeah, like, all the these guys we talk about. Fuck, fuck the, the draft. draft. All right, so we will bring on Mr. Tyrone, who took a week off last week. Still got paid for it, though. But what's up, Hollywood? Yo, Hollywood swinging. Yes, so sir. So nice of you to join what's us. Up, baby? Hey man, you We're know blessed tonight. I told the I told look, look, I told the boss what was going on, man. He still cut the check. You didn't tell us shit. Good. Yeah, you know, I, yo, you I just went. You went complete MIA. Yo. You know, no text, no yo. nothing, dude. You just went you MIA. Know, well, I text like, you, man. Yo, see, you this, this is where the shit starts up, man. Nah, man, Tyson know I texted him, bro. He knew I was in a bad no, location. Didn't. We don't even try that. You like never, I you said, never texted. Said you weren't gonna hey, make it. We had no idea. Hey, look here, look. Hey, look here, man. You still cut the you still you still cut the check though, right? Let's keep that energy, nope. baby. Like I said, man, yo, listen, I want to I wanna name some players that y'all didn't say. Number one, I want to say my man Bilal Powell, man. Like, yo, just real, yep, real, man. Just, just love that guy. Hey, somebody else, too. I know you guys, I mean, I know he wasn't on the team long. He, didn't make, he, he made a, uh, uh, not a major impact, but he's one of my guys. Joe McKnight, bro. Rest in peace, man. Uh, yo, I, I really, I, I, I knew when he came out of USC, I just thought he was just going to be so great for us, man. God love, man. I mean, defensively, man. I mean, like, I ain't even gonna lie, man. Mo, Sheldon, Leo. I mean, I love them guys. Hit man Harris. I mean, Max, Har- Max Harrison. Oh, oh my God. When, when was he undrafted? undrafted? Free agency. Undrafted. undrafted. Yeah, he was undrafted. undrafted. undrafted free agency, remember? Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Like, yeah, that's right. Know, Come look on. Look at guys like look at look at guys like Robbie undrafted, Falkowski undrafted. I mean, you know what I'm saying? So. Like I said, man, you know, we've had some busts. I mean, ain't nobody said Keyshawn. You know what I mean? So, you know, we it, – Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I said Keyshawn because he's one of my favorite players. I think he was oh, phenomenal. Yeah, I know. He I, 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 didn't, I didn't hear you say Keyshawn, baby. My bad. Calm down, big yeah, fella. He, I, lo- I love Keyshawn. But, but the thing is, like, when what happens is you get – we get so enamored by all those first-round picks and, and all that stuff – and we forget all the great values in a later round, like the ones like Primetime mentioned, the ones you're mentioning, like Blau Powell. Like, and, you, and, you, and the sad thing is a lot of these guys are very good, and the Jets never maximized them. Like, they, like, some, like, nope. like Primetime said, a lot of these guys didn't get their second contracts here. They left. Or, like, they're, they're almost like their careers were almost wasted where they could have did so much more, but it was always either a bad quarterback or a bad coach or whatever else. <laughs> Even I mean, uh, you know, I mean, Dolma, too. Okay, John, I love Dolma. Yo, bro. Tra- yo, Mario Tra- Davis. Tra- but listen. Hey, yep, yo, yo, double. What about what about Jordan Jenkins? Double J. I mean, you know what I'm saying? What? You know what I'm saying? You gotta give. You know, listen. This this is the craziest thing to me in the world, right? And I'm gonna say this, and I don't care how you feel about it. Mark Sanchez, because he got me through two AFC Championship games back to back. You know what I'm saying? I, I gotta say, Mark Sanchez. I wish that he would have been groomed better. Wait, 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 wait. You're gonna say Mark Sanchez was one of the best draft picks over the last 25 years? One of one one of my uh. favorites. Yeah. One of my favorites. Uh, we got me the two AFC championships. Nah, we ain't been back. We ain't been back since, bro. We ain't been nah, back since. So I'm gonna no, give him credit, Mark Sanchez, but I can't do that. I like Mark Sanchez. Me neither. I can't do that. No, me neither. I mean, but listen, proud town. You don't even count, man. You like fucking Hackenberg, bro. You was a Hackenberg. <laughs> Listen, why, wait, 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 Tyrone, wait, 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 Tyrone, hold on a second. Hackenberg. Hackenberg. But Tyrone, but see, but Tyrone, the weird thing is. See, you're trying you're trying to come here and create chaos, but then but primetime likes Chad but primetime likes Chad Pennington, who's definitely a better pick than Mark Sanchez. Hey, listen, everybody oh, likes you're welcome. You know, everybody everybody like that. Chad Pennington, bro. Like you know what I'm saying? When Chad came in, bro, like you know, if Chad so why you got saying him, bro, first? Like, you, you didn't mention him. Huh? Hey, you know why? why? Mark got Mark got me the two AFC championships back to back, like I said at first. So oh, that's why so I'm you'd Mark, rather have Mark on Sanchez my list, over Chad on Pennington. My list. I mean, bro, nobody in the world would say something like that. But at the, at this point, in my choice, you just said it. Two, now, if he got me the two AFC championships, I'd have loved it. But he didn't. So I'm going to go with Mark, man. Right now, I'm going to go with Mark. Chad Pennington is always going to be one of my favorite players just because of what he did for us in the heart. Who's of the a show, better quarterback, you know Pennington or Sanchez? Uh, Pennington. But hey, listen, hold on. 
Listen, bro, hey, we can go back. Then, hold on, we can go back in the fourth. The hold on, we can go back. Hold on, hold on, hold on. In the waffle, listen. We can go back in the archives, buddy. We can go back in the archives. If we would have had another quarterback, I would say if we would have had any quarter. We'd have Randy Orton. I'd have had one fucking Super Bowl or been in the Super Bowl. Is that correct? Who the hell is Randy Orton, a wrestler? <laughs> oh, okay, the, uh, the 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 legend. The, uh, the, Kyle, yeah, Orton, yeah, Kyle, Kyle Orton, you mean? Kyle, Kyle Orton, my bad, Kyle Orton, man. You know. You're trying to argue with getting names bro. wrong, dude. God damn, man. At least bring, hey, bring your A game tonight, would you? Jesus hey, man, Christ, he's met the WWE guys. The hey, WWE listen. guys he's mentioning now. What the fuck? Listen, you know what, man? Listen, man. Number, we are listening. Number one That's Tyson, the problem. Man. I'm not, I'm not, not going to go for this bullshit tonight because I was here last week. You guys didn't defend me. Your little, your little fan club out here taking shots at Tyrone. I appreciate, but I'm gonna take it anyway, though. You know what I'm saying? I appreciate that. You know, I, you know, I stood up see, for prime time. But see, but Tyrone, there's, there's something my father, there's something my father always told me. When the cat is away, the mice will play. Always keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> hey Tyson, your, 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 hold on, Tyson. What's your favorite saying during the season? Your, your best availability is availability. You know what I'm saying? Your, your, your know, best ability is availability. Uh, That's right. Absolutely. Yes, sir. Nah, man. But, I, but I, I, I'm going to be so, honest, man. I, I missed the shit out you guys yeah. last week, though. I really did, man. So, now, let's do show so, after so now, but so going, you mentioned a lot of guys on offense. On defense, who are some guys that stick out over the last 25 years, like really good draft picks? I mean, I'm not going to lie to you, man. You know, a prime time kind of kicked on everything I would have said, but I'm definitely going to say Darrell Reeves, Hitman Harris, always one of my, you know what I'm saying, favorites, bro. You know, and I'm going to say, you know what I'm saying, I'm a, I mean, I'm not going to say the names everybody want me to say, but I'm going to say. Um, Jamal Adams? Damn. You know what, man? I'm gonna be real with you. I love Jamal. I really did. I love that pick. I love all pro player together. You know what I'm saying? But uh, I, you know, the way he did us, bro. Like, you know, I don't care if guys leave, but leave with grace and leave with respect. That guy went out like a bitch, and I got no respect for him. So I'm not even gonna mention his name. Um, uh, you know, if I'm gonna say a safety, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take Marcus May right now. <laughs> Just because I'm not saying the other guy, but I did love the pick when we got him. I love. I, I like the Leo pick. I, I like how Leo fell to us. I just wish that he could have maximized his, you know what I'm saying, his strength and ability. I love Mo, you know what I'm saying? I love Sheldon Richards, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, I mean, I didn't like the Darren Lee pick, you know what I'm saying? I didn't like that at all. Um, underrated guy. Um, I'm trying to think somebody underrated that, you know what I'm saying? You know, hey, man, I'm going to be real with you. I was a big Kerry Rose fan. I ain't the Rex caught his ass out. I was yeah, a so big Kerry Rose yep. fan, bro. You know what I'm saying? I Until he got his contract. Going, you know I mean? Yeah, nah, so he started acting, bro. He went soft and she went left. He, no, went, he went. He went Hollywood. He, more, he went more Hollywood exactly. than you went. <laughs> exactly. He went stage left, and they never come back. You know what I mean? But I mean, we've had some great. We have. We've, uh, I'm not gonna say great. We had some really good players. You know, through our drafts. I mean, it just they they, were, they never got coached up. I mean, we noticed the same problem we always had, and we keep having the same discussion. We've had really good players in the building. This is what the their their skills was a maximum. Yeah, we maximize. Yeah, but. But unfortunately, we had a lot of really shitty drafts too. We had some, we had some really bad drafts, like a, a period of just awfulness, which oh, doesn't. I mean, doesn't well, well. the last listen, ten years. <laughs> hey, 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 prime time. Now, listen, I, I don't want to bring this up. But I'm gonna bring it up anyway. Your man John is this man. What did he have? Whoa, 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 whoa. What did he have? I know John is this. No, no, no. I'm not talking about John your man. No, no, I'm not talking about your man like that. I'm just saying I didn't want to bring his name up. I do Tyson, but it's not a whole rant on his ass. But what I was about to say is, but didn't he have 12 picks that year, bro? He had 12 hey, picks. Listen, if, no, if I remember hey, right, I think three, maybe four of them were cut before the end of training camp. And then I think another oh, two or bro. three of them were cut during the season. But listen, hold on a minute. But the point I was trying to make is, remember how excited we were that we had 12 picks and we were going to move up in the draft yep. and get the players that we wanted? And we end up having yep. a whole draft in, like, I think, like, six or seven players or eight players or nine players. He drafted ain't even in the fucking league no more. They weren't even in the league the next year, remember? Yeah, but, no, you, know what, was but Tyrone, you know what my favorite part of the draft is, is that, and that is the perfect class to talk about because after every one of those picks, all of us fans found ways to justify it, whether it was Jalen Saunders or Shaq Evans or whoever the fuck it was. Oh, that's a, that's a sneaker pick, and that's a great pick. And it, just like Blake last year, like last year, every every guy that Joe Douglas took was fucking in. The, oh my god, minus James Morgan. James Morgan got everybody pretty much hated that, but like every no, pick, no, no, like no, I guarantee you, a week from today and and or a week from Thursday and Friday, 
every pick they take is going to be brilliant, and we're, it's going to be justified. It could be the most dumbass shit, like a defensive tackle from Northern Idaho University. It's like, oh, what an innovative guy. Look, he's, you know, like when they, when they took Nathan Shepard. Oh, shit, the guy's from Canada. This is great. Like the same thing. <laughs> the same you know what's so funny thing, Nathan Shepard. Hey, yep. you know, have you ever had a, yo, bro, listen, you know the funniest shit is? Is one third of these guys, I got to look the fuck up. I don't even know who the fuck they are. Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, guys on my, I'm Well, dude, nobody, dude, Tyler, if we're being honest, nobody really knows. And you know how nobody really knows? Because re- everybody regurgitates the same fucking shit. Oh, he's got a good motor, good energy. He's explosive off the line. Everybody recycles the same bullshit. They go to the same analyst, take his take, copy, and say that's their own take. I don't know. That's why I don't buy it. Like, when, people, when people call up and say, what do you think about the linebacker from Oklahoma? I have no fucking idea. I, have no, I don't know who he is. <laughs> and, this, and you know what gets, me even, what gets me further than that, though, man? Listen to these analysts talk, and they're wrong every fucking year. They might get the yep. one or two picks. Like, yo, I'm sorry. If you, if you don't know Trevor Lawson, the first pick of the draft, you're a fucking idiot. I mean, it's just what it is. I mean, he has the playbook. You you can't get that wrong. You can say you can say Zach Wilson to us. Anything after that, bro, is a, is a, is a crapshoot. Well, you're that's me and that's no, you're right. You know, and the thing is now, the thing now is like, well, the, like the Jets have talked to the following players. It means absolutely nothing. Nothing. That doesn't mean it doesn't mean none of the teams. Like it's all smoke screens and bullshit and diversion tactics and everything else. Bro. Nobody's gonna reveal their cards for the next two weeks. You get you yep. get sixty players to talk to, so of course I'm gonna yep. talk to everybody. I'm gonna pick some flyers or some guys that might be undrafted free agents, or some guy I might get in the sixth round, some guy I might pick up in the fifth round that can contribute on special teams. That I can groom in the year two to be a you know say a productive player on the team. You know what kills me though, right? If, you know I'm sitting in here listening to this shit earlier yesterday. I'm riding, I'm riding, listening to this bullshit, and they're saying that San Francisco's taking Matt Jones, but I'm sorry, bro. You really think that they're going to tell you what they're going to do, bro? I'm sorry. I don't believe that nope. shit. I believe the draft is when, when the pick three comes up. Oh, my God. They did what? They're not picking fucking yep. Matt Jones. I don't believe that bullshit. Yep. You know, they're all like, playing you know, games, I'm, man. They're all yo, playing listen, games. Trying to, they're trying to set each other up. They're trying to, like, they're just, they try to, like, leave, like, little, like, little breadcrumbs out there. Like, who's going to bite exactly. at this? Maybe somebody else wants Matt Jones. And maybe they'll offer him a trade. Or maybe they'll offer him this. And it's all games. Bullshit. But the interesting thing. The interesting thing is now everybody's saying that Justin Fields is going to go to Carolina Panthers. And I'm like, what? I'm like, that'd be fucking just like, <laughs> like, hey, like, I'm just like, dude. bring on the draft, dude. Like, just bring oh, on the draft. Hey, I'm, I'm over I'm gonna it. Tell you something that, I'm going to tell you something I heard today that was so dope. Okay, Kyle Pitts, man. You know, I know that we've had guys on the people that called on this show before, you know, we got rid of Sam. Everyone's talking about getting Kyle Pitts, you know what I'm saying, move down and get Kyle Pitts. So I was listening to this report today, right, and they broke it down. They were like, yo, name the top three receiver, uh, tight ends in the league right now. Prime time. Who are the top three tight ends in the league right now? Kittle, Kittle Kelsey. Kelsey, and Waller maybe? Okay. Name one of those motherfuckers that were drafted in the first round. None of them. <laughs> None of them. None of them. Yep. So, so you know, so, yep. you know that, that's, that's the funny thing about the draft is, well, this guy is different. Every guy is fucking different. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm like, you know, Everybody, like, remember, what's the, what's the kid that we took, man? I was going to say his Dude. name. I really liked him. Um, the tight end but you know, Tyron, I'm, I'm guilty him. of that. Tell you're, make, you're, making a, you're making a good point because I was guilty of that with two players, David Njoku and uh, was it O.J. Howard? Was it O.J. Howard? What was his no, name? No, no. Yeah, O.J. Howard. Yeah, yeah those, those guys, yeah. they're coming out. Wow. I'm like, oh, my God. They're, wow. But they're, like, first-round picks. I'm like, these guys are elite. Like, you can make a – like – they're like these elite playmakers, a tight end. They're going to change the game, all this stuff. I was on both of them, dude. I'm like, I love both of them. I'm not even A lot lying, of people dude. wanted Howard like, at six over Jamal Adams. I did. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I did. I, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I well, love them, dude. I thought he was going to be, I thought he was gonna be a breakout hey, talent, to be honest with you. I, I, I'm not even going to lie to you, man. I wanted Jamal Adams. I'm, not even, I'm, not, I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't think he was going to be there when we picked. I really didn't. And, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, we got lucky with those kind of players. But then you find out what kind of players you have. But, I mean, at the same time, you have a bad organization. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. And Tyson, you, you did something about two weeks ago, man, a video you put out, man. That shit was good as fuck, bro. Like, yo, you really, really, yo, you really hit that shit, bro. And I can tell you was pissed off with, with, the, with the shit you keep hearing. And, you know what I'm saying, I'm sure prime time, me and every other Jet fan is so sick of hearing how dysfunctional the Jets are, bro. I'm tired of hearing that shit. So yep. to watch, you know, to give Joe Douglas, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that he's done an elite job or he's done, but this, the, the, the two, oh, to say that we have a little stability better than what we had prior, 
I'm going to have to yep. agree to that, man. So let this man finish what he's going to do. You know, all this, like, he got to take a line in that 23 or he got to do this, bro. The season is a long way away. You think this man doesn't understand that what went wrong with Sam? You think that they realize that not having talent around a quarterback, not having a good offensive line around a quarterback, not having a running game around a quarterback is going to be successful? You can't win like that. And, it, and on top of that, look at Kyle Shanahan, bro. He had half his fucking team out. He had guys working that food line last week come in and win games. When you got a good system and a good coach who's innovative and who works with his players and, and maximize their talent, you can get anybody you want to. You can take a court, you, you can take a tight end in the in the fifth round and make him a superstar. Why? Yep. Because you because good coaches make players better. We haven't had that. And well, that's, you, Rex. you know, and Rex they, was a great and coach. They were, and, and we made that we made that example last night where it was like if you look and I, I'm a I'm a diehard Knicks fan, dude. And I'm like, you look at this year's team, you know and this year's team, this year's team doesn't have a lot of talent, a lot of unproven guys, a lot of guys shooting their shoulders. It's coaching, well it's culture. But, dude, coaching, yes. culture, and they all bought into the system, and they're playing for one another. And that's any yep. team, dude, especially in football. If you get a group of guys that rally around each other, they play hard, they play discipline, they play smart football, you can win football games when you're not supposed to. And that's what yep. the Jets have lacked. Like they, they, a lot of times they underachieve or they, they start mailing in. They don't earn their contracts, all this other shit. To me, like – and I'll be honest with you, dude. The Knicks can go one and done in the playoffs. I don't give a fuck, dude. Yes, you know, sir. this is fun to watch. Because, dude, like, you know what I, what I – at this point what I want to see, I want to see a team that I can be proud of. Like, you can watch your football and yep. like, you know what? This goddamn team plays hard. This goddamn team is well coached. And that's – you know what? And we understand, listen – we don't have as much talent as the Buffalo Bills. We don't have much talent as the Miami Dolphins. That's just a fact, dude. And you know what? The Patriots yep. either. But you know what? If we're well coached and we're disciplined and we're showing a shitload of progress, I'm happy as hell, dude. Because that's what you want. Like this Nick team right now is what I want to transfer over to the Jets. Get the coach, yep. get the program, get everybody on the same page, and get moving in the right direction. And you know what happened? Dude, what's going to happen with the Knicks? What's going to happen with the Jets? Like right now, the Knicks are setting the, to- the culture and the tone. Next year, dude, they can get free agents because people are going to want to come play for a winning team on the rise. That's how it works, yep. and that's how the Jets can do it yep. too, man. You set your culture. You get this, let this team showing, like, listen, all right, they're, not, they're done being a, a clusterfuck. They're done being half-assed. They, they, they know what they're doing now. They just need more pieces. You start it this year, and next year you, you advance, and that's what I hope it happens, dude. Like, the Knicks are the perfect example that what you want to see out of this team this year. Exact, exact, same exact example. And, and, uh, and something else I want to touch on, Tyson, if you notice the kind of players they brought in this year, all these players come from winning organizations. Have you noticed that? A lot of these, you know what I'm not, saying? With not not, Carl, not Lawson. Carl Lawson? <laughs> no, no, no. No, no, no. But you, not everybody, but, you know, you have a lot of guys coming from winning organizations. <laughs> Two. <laughs> Yo, you have Kevin more Cole? coming from winning organizations than you do from a losing organization. More or less. Listen, I mean, what? What are the, Did we sign a guy from the Chargers? Upgrade? <laughs> Did we upgrade? No, no, that guy's not even going to play, bro. Listen, he doesn't even count, bro. Rod Davis is with the Lions, guy, right? Yeah. That guy's a death piece, man. The okay. offensive line was the Chargers. Almost almost the whole fucking class was, was on bad teams. <laughs> nah, bro, you crazy, man. Davis, bro. Look at their free agent class, dude. The, old, the only guy that's good, you got what? Tyler Croft was with so, the Bills. You got him. And then Shelby you got Lincoln, what? Davis. Lamarcus Joyner, I guess. You got, I guess. You, got you got you got Carey who won a Super Bowl with the Eagles. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you, you got better players coming well, in. No, you got more, but Vinny, Vinny Curry, they were they were terrible last year. Vinny the Curry. Eagles were terrible last year. No, but I mean, he was with yeah, the Super Bowl. I'm not talking about last year. Kevin he Kevin Coleman, the, the, the 49ers weren't good last year. Yeah, but he was with them when they when they, when they played the Super Bowl. Kevin Coleman was on that team, correct? <laughs> How far back are we going? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're going back one year. San Francisco was a, yo. They Any was player that's ever played on a winning team, man. Winning culture. Were, San, Francisco was, San Francisco was one this, year away from the Super Bowl, right? Man. Well, let me ask you a question. Who on this team, who on our team, it comes from a winning organization? The place for our team. Right no, no, no. I'm not talking about, no, no, no. I'm not talking about guys we bought in. Guys on our team right now. Any of them guys. Uh, have been in the window. Moses on our team right Fuck now. No. no, I was talking about our players. Huh? I think they're most the guys we bought in. I'm talking about our team. Well, when was the last time we made when... the playoffs? Ten years. Ten years. You, Tyson, if you fucking say Alabama, bro, I swear to God. Quentin Williams. Alabama. 
<laughs> hey, look, so, Ala, so you so you you in the, you're in you one of those types to say Alabama Park could have beat the Jets two years ago? Just saying. You talk you talk about players with a winning mindset. I mean Quinn Williams did a shitload of winning in college, but if you want to go that route, okay, but I mean, there's yeah, okay, Tyson. I'm gonna let you slide. I I ain't gonna comment on that one right there. That's bullshit. You know it. Because this saying, take we is just been awful. Week. I mean, I'm, gonna, I'm ready to bring Steve yeah, I mean, on this take is so bad. I'm not George fan. George fan. Seattle. <laughs> Seattle Seahawks. There you go. Safe yep. one. There you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. So we'll go to the callers because this this is going in the wrong direction. We're gonna bring on Steve because Steve is a fan favorite, and I can only imagine how good this take is gonna be. Oh, that's gonna turn Steve, around. what's up, man? Hey guys, how you been? Long time no talk. How you guys doing? All right, Steve. What's Dude, going man, on? How are you, man? Hey, it's good. It's good for, to hear all three from three of you guys. Uh, Tyson, Tyrone, Kevin. You know, I love what you guys have done. You know, the, you know, uh, on your show and especially on the video calls that you guys do. You guys are doing a great job as we're getting ready for this upcoming draft. You know, I, I, as first off, I gotta say because I liked what you guys started off at the beginning of the show. You know, players and the three best defensive players you ever watched and played that was taken out of the draft by the Jets. If I got to if I got to say like for me on the offensive side of the ball, um the first two people that I will mention will be DeBrickshaw and Nick Mangold. And the reason why I love DeBrickshaw and Nick Mangold was because, you know, they're they're both to me two future Hall of Famers and they were two of the greatest draft picks that the Jets had back in the 2006 draft. And especially, you know, the game that they played, it was phenomenal. And if I had to pick another player, I would go with Jericho Cotri. Because when I first became a Jets fan, I watched Jericho Cotri play, and my God, did he make some unbelievable catches in games. They were my three favorite offensive players going in uh, that we drafted out of. And then on the defensive side of the ball, I love Sean Ellis. John Ellis I loved because he was one of the first defensive players I watched growing up as a Jets fan. Um, then the other two that I would pick would be David Harris and the number one player is Darrell Revis. Hey, good take, Steve. Enough. I ain't going to lie to you, man. I, I didn't even think about Jericho Shorehands Cotton, bro. He made some dope-ass catches across the Kevin board. mentioned them. Did you not listen to the fucking show? Kevin mentioned them earlier. Yeah, I'm, on the, I'm on the show. I didn't, I, didn't, the I didn't hear that. Yeah. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear it. God damn, man. Oh, my God, Tyrone. This is terrible. <laughs> you got prime time. I didn't, no, I didn't hear that, bro. I did that. But that's one of my favorite <laughs> my, my players. My first bro. three guys were Cotchery, Coles, and uh, Leon Watson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you right, bro. Tyrone. You right. You did say that. My uh, bad. My this, bad. Is, this is... <laughs> This is hey, just some shit, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, it's 420, baby. Hey, what do you want me to do? I'm doing my best. Oh, that's what it is. <laughs> so, Steve, what are your thoughts on the draft, man? Are you ready? I what are you taking after Wilson? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what am I? Well, here's the thing. First off, I got to say, I, I do believe. Now, I know Kevin's being on Justin Fields, but I think the one who we, we are going to take is Zach Wilson. I think it is going to be Zach Wilson. But here's what I think what the Jets need to do when when they do have their other picks uh, coming up in the draft as well at 23 and then in the next night. At, I think with both of those picks, we got to go offensive line because we, we got to protect our quarterback. It's just I, I, I don't want to watch a game every time when we have to watch our quarterback get their ass kicked handed every single time. You know, we saw that All with right, Sam I, Darnold I the last couple for of years. Okay. I have a question for you. So if you're sitting there with your second first round pick and you have the say third rated center or second ranked corner, you're gonna go with the lesser value player just because you want offensive line. It's just the the, the thing is Tyson to me is in order to have your quarterback be really good too, you gotta have a good offensive line. You gotta have the offensive line. I, I can't I can't stand watching my quarterback literally going out there every single game getting his ass kicked. I, I can't yeah, take it anymore but, with but, that. But the question is, yeah, I, listen, I, I agree with you here, but I'm saying is if you're – so you're basically drafting need over value. If there's tremendous value there staring there, whether it's a corner or pass rusher, you're going to say, I'm not going to get the best value I can in the draft. I'm going to take need over that. That's how you're going to approach it? Yeah, you, you – you, you got you – got, uh, to me, Tyson, you've got to take need. You've got to take need. 
I, I got to go Ooh. offensive line. And the thing is, the other reasons I say go after offensive line, listen, I understand we didn't address the corner situation well. And, yes, the cornerback situation is a thing we need for the Jets as well. I would feel more comfortable going at the cornerback position later on later on in the draft. But I think the first focus is after we draft Zach Wilson, which I think is going to be the quarterback we're going to take. I mean, if we take Justin Fields, I would be all right with it, but I think Zach yeah, but, Wilson's going to be with the pick. You've got to go yeah, offensive on. line. You have to go offensive line, but according to all the analysts, not me because I'm not an analyst, they're saying that you get excellent value for three rounds for offensive line. So if that's the case, and you you can get very good value in the second round for offensive lineman, still addressing your need, but you can get a top corner with the second pick, you still wouldn't do corner. You know, you know. Listen, I, 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 as as of right now, Tyson, I would feel more comfortable with just going offensive line. We we need offensive line. Okay, but it's a long Fair draft, though, Steve. So I mean, now I got a question, Steve. But listen, Steve, listen. I, I, I was just touching this earlier. I understand that, you know, we need offensive line, but if there's a better value player there, you wouldn't go with the better value player at a position that, you know, also of need? You know, I mean, because like I said, and Bart Tyson just said this, listen, the draft has three rounds, maybe even four rounds of very capable starting guards. We need interior, you know what I'm saying? So our interior our offensive line is what we need. I definitely agree with you. But also there's going to be, you know, if everything's not covered in the draft, there's still going to be players cut. You know what I'm saying? June 1st cuts. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I think that he understands that he has to get that. So, you know, I mean, I understand where you're coming from as well, but a lot of people, cause a lot of people feel that way. But I don't think you force a need when you don't have to when you have a draft that's really deep in offensive line. What do you think, Primetime? So, I, I actually, I want to agree with Steve. I, I want to feel like the need should be the priority, which is to surround your quarterback with as much help as possible, in particular the offensive line. But every year I feel like we always look at the draft through our needs, and every year our GM goes for the, the best value, or at least they, they tell us, you know, as far as whatever their big board is, you know, they, they always stick with the best value, best player available. So I, I feel like especially for the Jets in their situation right now, admittedly in a, in a brand-new rebuild starting over with a new quarterback, you know, I feel like there's a million holes on this team. Douglas is going to look for the best player. So if he can get a starting caliber corner, and that's, you know, his number two rated corner, as opposed to maybe his third or fourth best offensive lineman, and he does like the depth in, you know, rounds two and rounds three, I could actually see him doing that. It wouldn't be my, my preference, but I would understand it because the, the approach is to build this thing for two to three years from now, not to win this year, I don't think. Well, Prime, I got a question. So what if the kid from Virginia Tech is sitting there at 23 and Creed Humphrey is sitting there at 23? Who are you taking Again, it, it's who who is the better player on your board? If you have oh, them somewhat an equal, then I think me. you have I to then I think you have to go with me. I would take yeah, no, I, I, I would agree with you, Steve. Yeah, if they're somewhat I'm equal on your board, then yeah, you, you go with whatever the the bigger need is, and that would be the offensive line. No, because the last time we drafted the center out of the first round, that was back in 2006, and that was when we took Nick Mangold. And that that would be something I would love to happen that don't again. Mean, that don't, so that doesn't that mean, don't mean shit. That don't happen again, Steve. Just because we drafted a, a a a guard or a center or 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 a left tackle, so the so the next left tackle we draft will be gonna be brick. Come on, man. But Steve, that, that, that I'm sorry, bro. That's just crazy as hell. What do you think, Tyson? That's nuts to me. Who are you taking, Tyson, at 23? If my man from Virginia Tech is there or Creed Humphrey, who the fuck are you taking? I, I may take your man from Virginia Tech and then maybe trade up to get the guy, trade up to get Creed Humphrey. Exactly, because you can trade. You sit that 34, so you don't mind yep. giving him a third. You might be able to get him at 34. Exactly. Yeah, yep. I, you know what? But, but let me ask you a question. I mean, listen, the kid from Ohio State going to be there. The kid from Illinois is going to be there. The kid from, um, what's, it, what's, what's, it, uh, what's the kid name? Uh, the one that killed the senior bowl. He's a, he's a center in the guard as well. You know what I'm saying? The kid. The kid from Alabama is going to be there. It's going to be guys there, man. So, I don't know, man. I, I don't think it makes sense, man, to make that kind of, you know what I'm saying, the pass on, on a like on a player that could be the best player in the draft. What the kid, the kid you know, the, what the kid said today from Virginia Tech, he said, yo, are you going to the draft? He said, shit, the best cornerback in the draft should be at the draft, correct? The kid's going to be a yep. monster, bro. You know what I'm saying? I understand he's been hurt, 
But, man, if you can get this kid, if he falls 23, hey, man, I'm Joe D. I'm running up that motherfucker, bro. Him and Bryce Hall, bro. Man. And then maybe even bring in Richard Sherman just to help guide these guys, bro. Oh, my God. Bring back man. Poole. Jeez. Oh, I'm yeah, yeah, well, yeah, what, I, yeah. What's this whole thing about with Brian Poole? How come he's not like, how come we're not re signing him draft, yet? I, I don't, I, I I don't get after, that. I think, I think after the draft, Steve, I think after the draft, I think that, you know what I'm saying, he'll be signed within a couple of days. I think they're waiting to see what they can get in the draft. They can get the same kind of value for cheaper. If not, they're going to go back with pool, man. I mean, I don't like yeah. how they're doing them. I think that, I think that you know what I'm saying, before he got hurt the last two years, if I'm not correct, he's been top three in, in slot corners. Am I correct? Top three? Yeah, top three in the league. I don't think he was that high. He, I, mean, no, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't remember. I, mean, his was, posi- I don't remember his if he was that high. And he was either. hurt. His, posi- his position was no, no, no. I'm talking about the last, like, like last two years. He's been here. He was, he was up there or something. He was up there, man. You know what I mean? Like, fuck you, John. Yo, listen, you listen. Uh, you know, prime time. We're, we're pro- okay. prime time. We're getting we're getting to the point now where Tyrone could took this week off too. Oh my God, these <laughs> fucking yeah. Things. Holy. Hey, shit. listen. Hey, Tyson. No, so on. Tyson. <laughs> You hang on yes, a second. Sir. Now, Tyson, there was actually something that you brought up earlier tonight, which is something that I I agreed to you on, which was this. Tonight, you brought up something good about the Knicks. I want to see because listen, one thing that you saw is that you've watched the Knicks, and I've actually listen. I'm not a basketball fan, but the other night I actually did watch a little bit of the Knicks, and you know they've always have been a bad team and a bad organization. Finally, have a really good coach. And I give the Knicks a lot a of minute. credit of what hold they have done this season. Well, hold on, a second. Hold, hold on, on a second. If you don't, if you don't fucking, if you don't fucking watch them and know their history, no goes on week in and week out and year in and year out. How the hell would you know what they have? No, listen, I listen, I, I listen. I'm not you a basketball fan or anything. Thanks. You know, how, 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 how can you, how can you appreciate no, the analogy? He put on the game. He put on the game. He saw a well coached team that just won their sixth in a row. He, he understands good basketball, right, Steve? No, no, wait, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, no, no listen, watch, listen, I'm not, basketball. listen, I'm more of a hockey guy than a basketball guy. What are you talking about? Talk about a hockey team, Tyson, then. <laughs> no, but that, here's the thing. That, that kind of culture that the Knicks are having, I what want kind to of see that is? culture okay, happen so Steve, with the Jets okay, as well. So, Steve, since, uh-huh. since you know about the Knicks and culture, tell me what their culture was firsthand and then tell me what their culture is now and how it changed. Tell me how it was. Well, here's what did you, the, well, what did you well, know? Well, here's the thing. Here, well, okay. Well, here's the thing, yeah, Tyson. Yeah, I, I wasn't born in like in the, I wasn't born in the '70s, '80s, in, in the '80s, and I was a baby in the '90s. So I didn't really don't know too much about the. Were, were you were you alive? For, were you alive Patrick last Curry. year? Were you alive last year? Yeah, I was alive last year. I I, 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 I never paid attention to the next, were you, but were I always read how, how bad they were. So basically, Wait, you're, just you taking, you're just taking. You're just taking. You're just taking whatever you saw on social media and just regurgitating it. That's all you're doing. You really don't, you really don't know what you're talking no, about. No, no, no. Listen. Listen. I <laughs> watched shit. you play the other night on TV. You watched one and fucking I game. You put it by yourself. Give me a break, dude. I'm not saying an opinion. Stick to hockey. Yeah, oh, okay, fine. Whatever. Exactly. Tyrone, your thoughts? <laughs> I mean, I'm – you know, I'm a diehard Knicks fan, bro, so – I'm going to be like this, man. I, I definitely like what I'm seeing. I'm, I'm happy. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't really. <laughs> no, but, but Tyra, my question was more on what are your thoughts on Steve trying to form an opinion when he only watched one game in the last 10 years? I mean, you know, that's Steve. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Steve Steve listens to other shows, and he comes back, and he he repeats it. You know what I'm saying? Just like when, <laughs> when he, probably, he probably looked up uh, the year oh my God, he was Tyra. drafted. I'm just saying, I love yep. you, Steve, but it's the fucking truth. It's what goes on. You know, you know what? You know what's fucked up, Tyrone? Steve. You know what's fucked what's up that? is I just tweeted out that Steve had a good call and then he had to go and fuck it all up. I gotta take. I gotta delete the tweet now. <laughs> oh yeah, so, now you. I've been, a, I've been a Nick fan my whole life, Steve. So trust me when I tell you, bro. I've been through all of the, the sad times, man. Yeah, it's definitely watching them play competitive basketball is a beautiful thing, man. So don't don't believe the media saying that the, you know all the other shit because it's bullshit. You know, the, the only problem with the Knicks the problem is, is they have bad ownership. You know what I'm saying? That's the only problem they have with me. 
I, I, Tyrone, I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree with you more on that. That the he ownership is terrible. I agree. He doesn't know. know. <laughs> just just agree to agree. <laughs> you know your damn rule and shut your damn mouth. Oh God. Yep. Steve, have a good night, man. All right. Have a good hey, night, have a good bro. night, guys. Bye bye. Good talking to you, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't help yourself with Steve Carr. You know that shit, bro? Uh, you can't help yourself. You were just waiting. Steve was just, he was I mean, all happy just getting through the, the call and you knew it was coming. Like the train on the, the track, baby, here it comes. The tape wasn't wrong, but him trying to equate watching one game to understanding the Knicks culture and making that comparison to the Jets, that doesn't that doesn't add up. But you, but listen, man, you guys know what Steve does, man. Steve regards. Listen, I think Steve takes notes, man, before we get on the show, bro. I, mean, I swear to God, he Google shit before he gets on the show, bro. I think he really does. But Steve, yo, well, Steve he knows. Dude, man. He Great knows. Problem. Listen, when it comes to the Jets, he knows his shit, man. He goes back and knows like draft picks from like two thousand nine, two thousand eight. He knows exactly. all his shit. Google. <laughs> he knows his stuff, but he he crossed the bridge he shouldn't have crossed. He should have stayed back on the hockey yeah. side. He should never came down the basketball side. Amen. So. <laughs> Got to listen, Tyrone. We're all about accountability here, man. So that's the way it rolls. <laughs> hold on, so, so listen, speaking of account, hold on. Speaking of accountability, uh-oh. you never asked him a question, bro. At twenty three, who are you taking? Are you taking the cornerback? Or are you taking? Are you taking the guard? Or Cree Harper? I told you, you I'm, I'm taking. I told you, I'm taking the corner. And if I have to trade up to get Humphrey, yes, I'm trading up to get him. Yes, sir, absolutely. I like that, Tyrone. So, now you thinking? Now you moving? Prime time, man. You just agreeing with Steve, bro. That shit don't even count, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, that was some bullshit, Prime Time. You know, you know, you know this draft. If Prime Time, anybody on this fucking show know about players, you do, Prime. Prime Time. I remember calling yeah. the show three, four years ago just to get your breakdown of players, bro. So yeah. I know you know how deep this draft is with, with with guards and centers. You know that. So for you to say that shit, man, that's some bullshit, Prime Time. You waffle there. Man. <laughs> no, whoa, whoa. Where, where, where did I waffle? Man. You waffle. Hold on, where did I waffle? You waffle. You, you, listen, anytime you agree with Steve, consider the waffle. Fuck that. What? That's going in the bylaws, man. Fuck that shit. That's going in the book, bro. Anytime you agree with Steve, man, you waffle. Fuck that. That's what it is. All right, we're going Get back to the calls. We're going to go to J.J. of Brooklyn, who's probably just cringing at this point. J.J., what's up, man? <laughs> what's going on, what's J.J.? What's going on, fellas? What's up, bro? What's up, How's everyone doing? Hey, man, wonderful, man. How you feel about this draft coming up, bro? You know what I'm saying? Oh, I can't no, wait, JJ, man. Fuck, that. fuck this, JJ. JJ, at 23, who are you taking? The yeah. cornerback from Virginia Tech, or are you taking Creed Hall? No, taking? no corner, uh, O-line, O-line. That's it. I don't care if freaking uh, Devontae Smith falls to 23. I'm taking I'm taking an offensive Whoa. lineman. I don't know about that. All right, maybe you know I wouldn't go that far. Okay. I'll t- I take you know the Devontae Smith. Co- <laughs> you know what? You almost got the dial tone right there. Tyson, was, and Tyson had his hand on the button right there. He put his hand on the button. I'm only joking. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Obviously, I'll Don't take Devontae like Smith. <laughs> 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 It'd be a fucking, mu- no, be a fucking saying, mutiny like... if he didn't do that. <laughs> My bad. I'm just messing around. Now, obviously, I would take him, but I'm saying, no, I just I want an O-lineman, man, whether it's Creed Humphrey or, you know, I would love Vera Tucker, but, this a very slim chance he's going to be there at 23. He's probably going to go, like, mid-teens or something like that, maybe late teens. But, yeah, if I could get home free, and I would take, I would double up at 23 and then 34, honestly. You know, well, why you, you got to, you can't. That, though? Well, I because mean, we need, like, three call, linemen. Listen, listen. Hold you know. it's a, it, bro, listen, this draft is really yeah. loaded. But kid from Ohio State probably could be had, you know, mid mid second round, maybe even third now. The you know, the the other guard from Alabama. Oh yeah, he's gonna fall. Alabama. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of, you know what I'm saying? A lot of these guys yeah. are gonna be there, bro. So, you know, I mean yeah. the Michael Rack, the kid the kid from Ohio State with his um injury from the um from the from the uh the championship game, he's gonna fall. Yeah, he's Wyatt pretty, Davis pretty is right? on Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, why, why yeah. Davis should definitely be there at 34. I mean, there's some other guards. Uh, yeah, they're they're saying he may fall. Like, he was mentioning his kid named uh, Quinn Morens, um, who's getting a lot of hype uh, out of uh, Wisconsin Whitewater, a small school. That, that's, um, that's, Deontay that's Brown, what I, somebody that's that. That's what I was talking about, Prime Time. That's what I was talking about. Oh, yeah. Quinn yeah. Miners, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and then right, he is, right. that Deontay yeah. Brown, big dude out of Alabama. Um, yeah, they, they, yeah. Listen, there's some depth in this draft, but I, I still don't understand. Like, if you have the best available option there at 23, which is Creed Humphrey, I, I think you probably have to yeah. take him. 
it, offensive line yeah, is a priority yeah. right now. Cornerback can wait. Absolutely. Yeah, I would also, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I hear a lot of people say, oh, we're set at a receiver. I don't believe so. I don't, I mean, what is Denzel Mims? We don't know yet. You know, I mean. We're not, we're not, not a set, huge, but it's not a priority know. either. Right, it's not a priority, but if I could, we could use a speedster. We don't have a home run hitter on this offense. Who, who really scares someone? You know, who's going to take the top of the defense? Check out Tamori and Terry out of Florida State. Oh yeah, Kids yeah. Four, yeah. 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 Hey, 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 I even heard he's going to be available in like the fifth round because he's not going to fall that far. Uh-huh. But there's, there's some good depth at receiver yeah. in this draft. You never know how it's going to shake yeah, out. Definitely. I really yeah. just want a speed star at receiver. You know, none of our receivers are going to take, you know, the top off the defense, you know. So I would I would definitely try and get a speed receiver. And then I wanted to ask you guys this question, Joe Douglas. Is, do we fully trust him? Because if I had to be honest, I give him a failing grade for this past draft. I do. I'm sorry. He wasted on mid-round picks. I don't care. I mean, you know, he drafts Morgan for what? You know, P. Ryan or in the fourth round, he's a backup running back. I think that draft is like a C, C minus. You know, I mean, you know, I just don't think his draft was good at all. I really don't. I think he wasted. On I, I would say picks. a lot of the. I would say a lot of the picks are still question marks more than you know putting a grade on them as either yeah, you know I mean, failure it's still or early, getting a hit. But, guys like Cameron Clark, I mean, yeah. hadn't put a grade on him yet, yeah. and he hasn't seen the field yet. Yeah, yeah, I wish they would have played him, you know, like, but, you know, uh, Pirine was, was people, you know, I mean. But what show, I just, what's I don't, maybe it was better that they just kept him out of that. But what is it you know, what, what is Mims, you know. But what are they looking like? You know, I mean, I know it's still year? early. Huh? I said, what are they looking like? You know, he could have took Claypool. He traded down. He could have took Claypool. Instead, he traded down, and then he got Mims still, fortunately. But. You know, I just, I just, I'm not sold on our, on our receivers or our offense at all. You know, we don't have a number one running back. What, who do we have at tight end? You know, I just, we just got, we can't have another Darnold situation where we, have, we don't have great weapons. We have a poor O line. We can't have the same shit happen again. You know, Douglas has to hit a home run this draft. You know, between this draft and next year's draft, with all the picks he has, what? you got to get like oh, I was trying to get a playmaker at receiver and a bunch of O linemen. This draft, the recent draft, he took, what, one offensive lineman and one receiver? And those are our two yeah. biggest needs? You know, he's drafted yeah. safeties and tasks. You know, I mean, I just didn't like but his draft. You, I didn't. Maybe you guys feel different. But, you I, know. You're making some you valid have, points you to that. Be, I mean, a, a, lot, a lot of us were saying the same things last year. You know, why didn't they take multiple yeah. receivers? Why were we putting right. all of our eggs in the Brashad Perriman basket, hoping he was going to be a legit number yeah, one? Exactly. That was a pretty loaded receiver yeah. class. And this year, it's the same thing. But, yeah, I'd be pretty exactly. pissed off if we have to wait until – you know, round four or round five for a receiver, but that's unfortunately the yeah. predicament that we're in because we haven't hit on a lot of draft yeah. picks over the past number of years, and we haven't really done a yeah. whole lot of free agency either. So we got a lot of needs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you know, yeah, and the free you agency, know you know, we didn't get any of the offensive linemen we wanted. You know, I mean, that's why it would have been so big to get one of the stud linemen because then in the draft yeah. you don't have to take, a, you know, a lineman early. Now either at 23 or 34, you have to take at least one there, you know. So, you know, I, I wouldn't mind taking a stud receiver or speed receivers there at 34, maybe like, say, a Terrace Marshall or Bateman, you know, if you take a lineman at 23. You know, that's what I would do. You'd be lucky to see at 23. He's receiver. not going to be there by 34. You'd be lucky to see him there at 23 still. Who, who are you talking about? Bateman. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, he's probably going to go to, like, Baltimore. I think Baltimore will probably take him. I think he'll go, like, like mid-20s. Do you like Bateman on prime time? Oh, dude, I love him. If he's there at 23, it'd be yeah, tough for me to pass too. him up. But I, I understand receiver's yeah. probably not the priority right now, but if he's there at 23, I mean, that would probably be my, my the, the pick that I would like to see happen, but I would understand if it didn't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it, fellas. Have a good night, all right? Yeah, you too, man. <laughs> All right, next Hello. up is Max in Island Park. What's up, Max? What's happening, What's up, fellas? Max? Not so much. much. Good, good, good. So I want to go back real quick to our favorite draft picks from, from the past 25 years. 
I mean, Lavernius Coles is like my all-time favorite Jet. Like growing up, you know, he was a stud. I mean, you know, between him and Cotre, and like Santana Moss before that, you know, they had they had some great receivers back then. But you know, to name a guy that no one's named yet, what about James Conner, the Terminator, blowing up linebackers? <laughs> I mean, he was uh, the hard knocks hero, but on the field, I mean, he had some big hits, but, I mean, he wasn't – I don't know if I'd put him in my top five offensive picks over the last, uh, you know, 25 years. I was just thinking of of team favorites that, you know, home gr- you know, a, homegrown kids that came through yeah, the system. To watch. Oh, is, doesn't the story go Rex uh, was scouting a linebacker and Connor blew him up, and he said, no, Rex uh, – the deal with the GM, I think it was, was an idzik at the time, he said, you know, no, you, you can get one player. Okay. No, it was Tannenbaum. And he said, you yeah. know, Rex gets to pick one player for himself. And so he was scouting this linebacker. He got he got blown out by James Conner. He's like, nope, I want that kid. So I was just thinking about <laughs> a fun name from the past. No, that was definitely a good one. Brings back some memories when we actually had some, some ground in town. Yeah. Yeah. Clear cool. holes but- with Thomas Jones. Best thing but, uh, to do for a quarterback, build that line in front of him, have a ground game, let him work off of that. I'm all about but, that. But hear me out here. I don't want a guard or an interior line at 23, unless it's Vera Tucker and he drops all the way down. Because from what I'm seeing, Vera Tucker is really the only lineman that's graded as a first round talent. So with that 23rd pick, we got to take a, a premier talent. We're still drafting in the first round. That's fair. So yeah. as much as I want to double down and just all in on the offense, I mean, if Bateman's there, I'd really like to take him. If they're going to go defense, I'd rather them get one of the pass rushers rather than the corners. I feel like there's going to be a run on quarterback early, obviously, and corners early. I feel like if we're picking a corner at 23, it's going to be the third, maybe fourth corner taken off the board. I feel like a couple of these pass rushers are, are going to slide. And if we can get a really good pass rusher, double down on that defensive line, wow. that'd be good for the team. You know, it, so, so even with the signing of Carl Lawson, you're, you're going to double down on pass rush and kind of just the ignore corner? I, dude, <laughs> I got faith in, in Bryce Hall and Bless Austin. I, I mean, Bless had some no, rough no. moments this past year. But I, like dude, I, I still got faith that, that they could get hey, coached hey, up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Listen, if the kid from if the kid from Virginia Tech is there, bro, I'm sorry, man. He's the best cornerback in the draft. If he wouldn't have hurt his back, he took off last season, bro. I'm telling you, kid is straight, straight you wanna, monster, bro. That's you want to bring in a kid with a with a, a back issue? Yo, listen. I, the, yo, listen I, I, I don't want more more draft picks up. that I'm not going to see till halfway through next year. I mean, nah, he'll be ready by he'll be ready by the season, bro. But you're telling me, man, that you're right. telling me that, that that drafting a guard or drafting somebody that you know or drafting a a, a, a DN when we still when we well, that's the one that's the one weakness we don't have on the team. The, listen, our defensive I, line is the one is our one strong point. You don't see nothing else we could draft other than that. But you get you double down on that pass rush. You make your corners better. I think Bless Austin can cover for for three seconds if we're getting to the quarterback that quick. Man, bless off the place. He plays fifteen yards off the fucking ball. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen, no. do you? I mean, uh, look, I, you know, I, like, I still got, I I still got faith like that, like that like right after the story, draft, Sherman's like coming story, in. But I like Bless Austin's story. But let's be let's be real here, bro. He didn't cover no fucking body. Now I do like Bryce Hall. I love that pick. I like Bryce Hall. I think this kid could be something great once this kid get acclimated to the system. But I don't think Bryce Hall is our starting other side corner. I think they might. I think it's going to be a battle between Bryce Hall and um, and, and um, Austin. Yeah, they're, they're two go at each. Listen, we're going to put a number one corner over there, bro, or somebody that, that can dude, pretend to be a number one corner. Dude, Sherman's coming after the draft. I promise you that he's going to be the starting corner opposite Hall. Solid. Well, okay, I wouldn't be so. Wait, hold the, on. Hold on, hold on. I, I wouldn't be so sure about that because there's three things that he wants that we can't provide: a winning team, compete West yeah. West Coast, and, and and the big contract. He wants all those things right now. There, there's three that we may not give him. Yeah, uh, that, Shit. that's valid. We can't, Tyson. We can't give him none of those. <laughs> what are you talking about? 
<laughs> well, we can get him the contract if we want to, but I don't think we will, though. But he wants to go to a winning team, wants to stay in the West Coast. That's strike one and strike two already. So I yeah, think another team's probably sitting around. A lot of teams are waiting for the draft to go through and say, okay, listen, what holes do we still have? And then they go, they go pick him up. There probably could be a bidding war between a couple teams. You never know, but yeah. I don't think I don't think he's coming here, man. I I, I want my, him to, but the more the more he talks, the more you think it's not going to happen. Would be would be uh, Bateman out of Minnesota there if he slides, or Kadarius Tony because I want one more weapon for this team. Oh, Bateman yeah, reminds Darius me. Tony? He, I really think Bateman's hey, going to be a true number one. Hey, listen, Kadarius Tony is an absolute straight monster, man. This kid, man, listen. You know the funny part is. He's not even that fast. He's just so fucking elusive. This kid stop and go is is out of this world. It's dirty. That's the kind of player. It's dirty. That's the kind of player that we need, man. That just, yep. just you know, just you just throw him in the spot. You throw him field. in the backfield. You throw him wherever exactly. you need him. Punt returner, kick returner. Hey. hey, but check out the kid. Check out the kid from UCLA. Check him out. The running back slash receiver. Check him out. That's the other guy I think we might get in the fourth round. Kid like that, man. Just. This piece that we haven't had, those gadget players. If you look at what, what Shanahan does, he puts guys in position to get the ball in space. That's what he does. Yep. You need guys that get can to get the ball to the athletes, athletes, give them space to work with. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And I understand, listen, I understand what everyone's saying about offensive line. Listen, we've been, we've been screaming that shit for a whole last two, three years. I understand that. But you still have Clark. You don't know, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what Joe, but, how Joe Douglas views Clark. He watches the guy every day in the building. This guy could be somebody that could actually start. You know what I'm saying? We were looking at Clark when he first got drafted to actually start on the other side. If you move this kid in that guard, he got the same kind of mentality that the big ticket got, you might have a book inside. You know what I'm saying? So let's see how things play out first before everyone is like, yo, we got to draft this. I mean, go ahead. Would you, would you rule out taking Najee Harris or ETN at 23? Oh, absolutely. You know, given absolutely. given the I, the offense, no. a big running back. No, sir. No, I don't want either one of them, bro. In, in the first round, hell no. No, that's crazy. No, really? just, listen. I will. I will take a guard or take a running back any day of the week. I promise you. I'm just saying the guard. I mean, the guard wrong. value will be there at, at 34, and then the third and the fourth. Hey, bro, you're absolutely correct. But I don't want to take a running back that early when it's a lot of good running backs in this draft that can really come in and produce from day one. If you look at San Francisco's offense, bro. Name one, name one, one running back that you knew prior yeah. to them being on San Francisco. You know what I'm saying? I they mean, picked up Speedster from they're, from practice squad and, exactly. and made they, them into all pros. They pick up, they pick up Speedsters. They pick up guys that are good on the outside and guys that have great vision. That's what they like. All the guys what, they hey, took were late round picks. You know what I'm saying? You guys talked a little shit about Tevin Coleman. I love Tevin Coleman. I think he's going to be a good addition. No, I think no, he's no, going to no, be no. a good I, third I, down back. I, I like Tevin Coleman as well. I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I think Piron is the bad. I think Piron now becomes a bad fit for what they're trying to do because you know they don't really have. I never liked really, Piron. He doesn't really have. He doesn't really have the speed to get on the outside like they would like. So I think he. He, he, he doesn't have the speed and he, he doesn't speed. really run people over. So what does he really do? No, it, well, it's not about really running people over. He doesn't have great vision. You know what I'm saying? To where he's a. Yeah. He's a we, one but wait, hold on, 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 hold on here. <laughs> wait. So we don't even know what P. Ryan is behind an awful offensive line and a terrible offense. I'm not ready to write him off already. I mean, let's give him a chance in this offense to give him some space to see what he can do before we start trashing the kid. Holy well, shit. He's, well, he's going to be there. I, I, he's no, he's what, no, no. Joe Douglas traffic. What he's going he's gonna to be around. And Tevin but Coleman's saying, rarely I saw a lot more out of Ty Johnson with a shitty line than I did out of, out of P. Ryan. It, it, but see, Ty Johnson, Ty Johnson is made for the system. You know what I'm saying? He's fast. He can get on the outside. You know what I'm saying? Listen, the one thing that helped you, Ron, is he's a one-cut back. So, you know what I'm saying? With yep. this offense, we're gonna, this, this stretch zone running game we're going to be running, it's, you know, a lot on the outside. When the hole opens up, cut and go. That's that's how you get yards on this. And if you watch San Francisco over the last couple of years, they've been getting major yards. Good offensive line play. You know what I'm saying? That, that helps. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I think Joe Duck is definitely going to fix the offensive office line. You have a rookie quarterback coming in. What, like I've been saying for years, what helps a rookie quarterback more than anything? I don't care about receivers. Running game. A great offensive line and a good running game helps. Uh, can really make this kid better. This kid throws the yep. ball. He's very accurate. You know what I'm saying? He gets the ball. He's a quick release. He gets the ball out of his hands quick. But you have to make, you know what I'm saying, and this offense is, is quarterback friendly. So they're not going to put him to where he has to figure out everything. You're going to make easy reads for him. But you make the game easier for him by running the football. 
So I definitely think yep. they're going to do that. I just don't think they're taking a running back in the first round. That I don't think that you know. What I'm saying? I, I just don't see that. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't yeah. see neither one of them guys being somebody I would take. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't want to take a running back to the third round. And if we do, what's the kid out of Memphis? I want him. Memphis or uh, Javante Williams from from North Carolina. Yes, sir. He might be floating yeah, around back there. Another good kid. Yes, sir. Yeah, another good kid. Yeah. Too. You're talking about yeah. losing. It it well? Is it for prime time? The kid out of Memphis. Is that uh, Gainwell, I think? Gainwell, that's it, yes. Yeah. This kid is an absolute freak no. out the backfield, bro. He's a freak I'll out the backfield. I'll take Trey Thurman right? in the third round. Nah, man, no, bro. I, I ain't big on nah, – nah, not at all, bro. Not at all. I really like, – I'm telling you, yeah. I really like the kid out of UCLA. I like that kid a lot. Let me, uh, let me leave you guys with this. Hold out hope that Justin Fields gets picked at number two, prime time. Hold out hope. <laughs> I'm still hoping for <laughs> JD. I, I've, I've gone the JD record saying I will out. embrace whoever the quarterback is, but I'm still hoping it's going to be Fields. Hey, JD uh, hasn't let out any information, and everyone, all these analysts say, you know, it's going to be Wilson. I still have an outside hope. Fields would be the pick. But overall, I'm done with all this draft talk. I'm so tired of it. <laughs> really? I just want the draft. Are you ready for OTAs already? <laughs> I'm ready for OTAs. You know, you know why did why did push it back and torture us, bro? I have no fuck. I really, I really was really like last week. I really was thinking the draft was this week. I was getting all happy and shit. It was like, yeah, we got one more week, man. Oh my god, bro. Uh, Tyrone, I said the same I thing to my roommate it, earlier. I was like, wait, is the draft this week or next week? He's like, no, you just have wishful uh, hoping. It's next week. <laughs> wish world. Hey, bro, thank you for coming on, man. Yeah. Appreciate you, man. All right, boys, have a good night. Have a good, good night, bro. bro. All right, next up is John in Lakehurst. John, what's up, man? Oh, oh shit. shit. What's up, guys? <laughs> what's up, Tyrone? Look who fell into the room. Week, man. I miss <laughs> you too, <laughs> big bro. How the dog doing? How your mom's doing? Everybody good, man? Everybody's good. Everybody's good. I spent like uh, $500 on the dog pen, so nobody's getting out no more. <laughs> it's a big-ass <laughs> pen, though, but I was like, that's just easier than them digging under the fence, so... Uh, yeah, they right. like it. I, um, what's, what's your feeling, bro? I want I want to hear what you got to say, bro. Oh uh, man. Uh, well, I, I didn't well, hold hear on. Tyson's Wait, John. Hold, wait, John, hold on a second. I, I, but John, yeah. hold on. What are you you looking at? Jets draft picks over the last twenty five years. Who are three favorites on offense? Three favorites on defense. Who? Um. Shit. Gotcha. Chad Pennington. Not Mark Sanchez? Um, <laughs> no, I, I was honestly more excited. Well, that's fine. I, I was a big Sanchez fan, but I, I was more excited when we got Pennington because that was Fair like enough. more of like just getting <laughs> into all the football stuff for me. Um, Dustin Keller, that's one of my favorite players ever. Um, that's too oh, – man. That's kind that's of that's fucking hard. Uh, nah, I'm just thinking of uh, the offense. You said favorite all the time. Damn. Uh, oh, you got to do me dirty. <laughs> uh, Hackenberg. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I guess Mangled. I was gonna, I was gonna say back then because it's more. Uh, it, it's more current, but uh, which I really do like that pick. But uh, but I guess I would have to say Mangled on offense, and then on defense, <laughs> shit. Uh, I guess Revis, right? Everybody would say that. Um, Revis. Shit, I'm trying to think of old old players, but I'm, I'm trying to go back. Um, David Harris. Uh, Oh, you fucked up, Tyson. <laughs> uh, shit. I feel the same way. So sad. <laughs> he got me. He got me. You can't. You can't uh, think of another fucking player. Come on, man. Sean Sean Ellis. It's just a toss up because you said favorite. Like, and I don't have. Like, I don't like all the favorites that everybody like. I really like Dustin Keller. It's probably one of my favorites, Sean Ellis. Um, those, those are like uh, older, 
favorites, I guess, if you want to call them that. But yeah, that would that would be my six. Fair enough. That's all. That's an what's honest, all, friendly all this question. Sh- to your... <laughs> what's all this shitting on P Ryan? <laughs> we don't even know what P Ryan is yet. That's <laughs> I said, Tyrone. What's all this shitting on P Ryan. Oh, that was Tyrone. Yep. Oh man. No, uh, I don't think we even know what he is. I think he's more just a one cutback. I get what you're saying about the vision, but I think um, we're going to run a little more. It's not just going to be outside zone. I think we're going to run inside zone also. Don't you think with uh, LaFleur's brother, isn't that what they run up in Green Bay? Like more of an inside zone? Well, you know what? What I really think, though, I think that the biggest thing is we don't really know what Matt Lafleur is going to do. I think he's going to take a. I think he's going to take a mix. I think he's going to do what his brother did. Did you say Matt Lafleur? Mix together. He did. He did. What the <laughs> fuck, Tyrone? <laughs> God damn, man! Get nah, your yeah, shit that's what I'm saying, man. It's going to be a, a mixture. I think everybody keeps saying Forty Niners, Forty Niners, but I don't know if we're going to like just. Mirror what the 49ers did, but uh, but um, and that, so what was it? What am I doing at 23, right? Yes, sir. Oh, shit. Um, I think Tyrone needs more days off. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't know. I don't really, I think Caleb Farley will slip to the second. I don't really, I don't really see it. Uh, <laughs> Be in a rush to get him he's at twenty three. I think he, he's not falling to the second bus. It ain't happen. Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars says he falls to the second. Whoa! I'll Venmo you the money. I, I think, hey, yo, bro. I, I see. I see you're fifty there, big fella. Whoa! We got some wagers gonna, going on. All right, yeah, we, we're gonna see, wait to that. I see you're fifty on that. Yeah, cash out my money too, bro. I will. Okay. I'll, I'll cash out your money. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> That's the problem. That. Do that shit. No. Yeah, okay. You, you want, I, I you want to sit in there? Ball it needs to waste time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but he's a good player. I'll give you that. It's just the back surgeries, and then he missed the whole year. You know what I'm saying? Which I understand why he did that with the COVID and everything, losing a family member. But um, but, but I just I, I just think that, that, um, that that'll just make him fall. Like, I, I think – I, bro, I thought I, the same I, thing. I can, right? It wasn't. It wasn't. A, it wasn't number one. It wasn't. A, it wasn't a major back surgery. The kid has no injury history prior to that, and the kid actually is the best cornerback in the draft. Period. Hands no, down. I agree. I He's agree. With, I agree with you with that. But isn't that his second back surgery? I thought it was his second. Nah. Yes, he had surgery on something else, but it wasn't his back though. But um. I oh, took my I thought, I thought it was two fact, back surgeries. Ma- ma- mail me my shit in pesos, man. I want my I want my shit in pesos. You know what I'm saying? I'll send it to you. Tyrone, 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 Tyrone <laughs> you, you take Caleb Farley over Patrick Sertan? Hell no. Ooh. Ooh. See, prior time, why you had to go there, prior time? Hell no. He's the best quarterback in the draft. Is he better than the best quarterback in the draft, Patrick Sertan? Yes or no? He's the... Hey, listen, hold on. He's the best quarterback. In, he's the best cornerback in the draft at twenty three. Going to be there, yes, sir. Oh, but, uh, see, that's is, waffle. Tyson, get the so that waffle. What does that mean? The best quarterback in the draft at twenty three. What does that mean, man? You couldn't even think of. You couldn't even think of good jet players, man. In the last twenty five years driving, I'm waffling. Get the fuck man, out of here. Send him out fifty dollars, man. Oh, uh, man, fuck that, because we're the Jets, that's why. And I had to think of, like, who we actually drafted, and I didn't want to just throw out just fucking common yeah, names yeah, that, yeah, that okay, everybody John. would draw. I love you. Listen, John, um, I want my money, John. I don't play about my money, bro. I'm letting you know that shit. I real, definitely real, want bro. my money, because I'm telling okay, you, Caleb Farley should have fallen second. Want, if, then we should take him at 34. Tyrone, Caleb anyway, Farley, Farley or J.C. Horn? Caleb Farley or J.C. Horn? J.C. Horn, all day. I'm man. running that ticket to... Hey man, listen. You know I'm gonna be now, prime time. I'm gonna be nah. This ain't a walk. I'm gonna be honest. Horn is a motherfucking monster, and he hasn't been hurt. So now nah, I would. Definitely, I think. Listen, I would definitely take Horn. I mean, bro, I'm not gonna sit there and bullshit okay. that. But I. But Horn's not gonna be there at 23. That's the problem. You know what I'm saying? But, that, listen, Farley but, might be there. But in saying the that Farley's the best cornerback now, the best cornerback at 23, but also acknowledging that no, there's listen, still two no, cornerbacks no, 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 that are no, better no, than no, him. No, so he's the no, third, listen, maybe no, fourth no, best no, corner in the draft. No, no, no. No, that's not what I'm saying, prime time. I'm saying Farley's the best quarterback <laughs> in the draft. The problem is the kid had a back surgery. He, he's not going to be ready to tell, you know what I'm saying, 
probably training camp, you know what I'm saying, or so you are so season. you are saying That's he's right. better than Sir Cannon Horn. Yes, sir. Hell yeah, back to, that. bro. This kid's a straight monster. And listen, if he was, if he didn't have them back, Wait, that did back he just, I don't agree he was with the that. first cornerback off the board. No, he said that he said he's the best cornerback. Over Horn and Sertan, if I heard that correctly, yeah, I don't if know. He, if he wouldn't have had a back surgery, he would have been the first cornerback off the board. I'm, am, am I wrong? So Tyron, Horn, so, wait, wait, hold on, balls, Tyron, hold on. <laughs> so, if Horn, so if Horn is there, you're not taking him? You said what now? If Horn is there, they're both there at 23, you're not taking Horn? I would take Horn just because Horn hasn't been hurt. But Horn's not going to be that 23. No, 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 hold on. Wait, he's a I don't, this, player, is, this is what I don't hold on, but what this is what I don't understand. If you're saying one player is better than the other, then wouldn't you just take that player? Then why are you going back to the other guy? I'm going back to the other guy because the kid had a back surgery. But so I'm then saying wouldn't for, he just be better than no. <laughs> listen, no. Listen, what do you mean no? Man. Stop the bullshit, bro. Listen, I don't stop understand. the bullshit. What is the, what is the, the back bullshit? surgery? Let me, that much, let me, let me, let me, the back surgery is that me. much of an issue. I mean, wow, the horse better. Than is. If the back, listen, if he didn't have the back surgery, he wouldn't be there at 23, period. He'd be the first cornerback off the board. But, yeah, but if, I, if I got the choice see. between him, but if I have a choice between him and Joe Horn, Joe, you, would, you would take Horn. Just Joe, Joe Horn? Back, He's coming They're out the of the same? <laughs> Is he playing receiver too? <laughs> <laughs> so two birds with one stone. Here we go. And Joey Tuck. Y'all trying to mess me up, man. You know what the more over here. No, man. you yeah, messed yourself up. up. This is why this is why we have yeah. the problems that we have. We try to have a serious you know. show here and you waffled in a matter of three minutes. <laughs> I didn't walk like three, four so how, how did, did the whole hold, on, hold, on, hold on, how did I walk, man? Please explain this shit to me. Yo, dude, it's not hard. Prime time, can you explain this to me? Am I the only one thing that what he just explain did? Explain this to me, because I'm lost. Oh, you just yes, said, so. you said Farley, with Farley is the best corner in the draft. If Horn and Farley are both available, you're taking Horn. It makes no fucking that's sense. Not, that's not what I said. That's yes, the whole problem, man. See, oh, no, my not. God, I man. Said, I said, what the hell did you smoke best? tonight? God oh, damn. Listen. It is the, rock, the whole goddamn <laughs> forest. Yo, yo, listen. Yo, listen. Holy number one, I said, shit, man. I said, Farley's the best Farley's the best cornerback in the draft if he didn't have a back surgery. That's what I said, man. Yeah, but but see, the whole, the whole thing is, but Tyron, the whole thing, the if did happen. So I asked you a very exactly. – Prime time. Did I not ask him a question? If Horn or Frawley is there, who's he going to take? It's a very it's a straightforward question. You're stumbling question. now, Tyrone. Stumbling. <laughs> hey, stumbling. Man, listen, number one, man. Hey, listen. Number one, I'm too tall to act small, man. And all these words. It is what it is. This is movies that my nuts are. I don't think it's fuck. At the end of the day, it is what it is. That's what I said. Prime time. That's who's when you, that's when you know track. Tyrone waffled. When Tyrone who's, starts who's saying it is what it is, you know he waffled. You know it. That's <laughs> hey, whenever you, whenever you start struggling, it is what it is. That's prime some deep shit the right there. It is what it is. Pat, Patrick Sertan is the best, the best corner in the draft. Patrick Sertan. Who's the best quarterback in the draft? Second best? J.C. Horn. J.C. Horn. Who's the third best? Third best is maybe Caleb Farley. Right there okay, with Greg Newsom, probably. He's let right there with Dante if, Samuel, though, I think. Yeah, Dante Samuel's right question, there, too. If, he could be a hey, first-round pick. Hey, prime time. Prime time, let me ask you an honest question. If if Farley wouldn't have had those back surgeries, what would he be on your list? Would he be higher? He would still be behind Sertan. Maybe closer yeah, to Horn. He's probably yeah, not my, above Horn. And yeah, and if, so if, he'll if be my, number, my cat he'll be started two, barking. Get the fuck out of here. Right, right. If my aunt had balls. He's going to catch me, bro. <laughs> I mean, hey, your own mic, your, listen, your own mic got balls. Your own might be your own, man. We don't know how shit's going on here, man. I'm just asking. You know what I mean? Uh, you know who I am? I want, hey, John. Who didn't have back oh, surgeries? Like I'm taking Creed Humphrey. There you That's go. That's all I'm Because he, he won't be on the board at 34. That's guaranteed. You want to put another 50 on that? <laughs> no, I don't know. Ooh. Hey, 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 I, actually, I think you should. I actually, I actually, I actually like Creed Humphrey, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take that back because I know he's gonna never get the first round. 
But I'm telling you, man, I don't think Farley makes it. He's not looking at the first round. I don't yeah. think that happens. Whether he comes in at guard or center, however they're going to do it, flip-flop who, I think that's that's more of a pressing need than corner because I think we still got money. We still got cuts to be made. Second wave of free agency. We can get another outside corner. Um, and we can get another fucking guard. Ain't y'all tired of getting yeah, the second but, best but not, at every not fucking get thing? The best, just like you said, Patrick Sertan's the best corner in the draft, right? The best center he in the draft that. is Reed Humphrey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, no. It's Caleb Farley. Uh, uh, I didn't if, say that. If, nah. Hey, pr- <laughs> but, 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 but prime time, <laughs> what's, the, what, what's the difference between the prime time? The center from Alabama and, and, and Humphrey, what? how big of a difference is that? What? The what? difference is, what? I'll tell you the difference. What? No, the difference between the center of Alabama and Creed Humphrey, one, Creed Humphrey is way more of an agile center. The center from Alabama is more of a power center. Two, the center from Alabama had surgery on his knee. He pulled, I don't know exactly what he did, but that was in December. So he's he's already just got injured at the end of the year. So I would definitely take Creed Humphrey over him just based on injuries. Why are you picking all these injury question? guys? Farley, the, the no. guy from Alabama. Let me let me let me ask you another, <laughs> let me ask you another question, John. John, let me ask you another question. So, is there is there really a big difference between a left-handed center and a right-handed center? I would what? think so. Is there a difference? I'm it asking. Depends. Is there a difference between a, de- left, it, it, a left? It depends on it depends on how they right? snap the ball. Prime time is that is that is that something that normally happens with a, with a left handed center? He's when he's when, from a shotgun. He spins the ball different. Is that correct? I, I don't know. I have to look at the tape. I guess. Okay. Yeah, I'm not <laughs> really sure on that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. That's wondering. We'll talk about it later, though. You 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 remember later? Tyson won't remember, but you you have to remember later. Well, I I had a little mock. I want to see what you guys think about it. So you got Zach Wilson. I got Creed Humphrey at 23. I got Asante Samuel Jr. at 34, if he's there. If he's not there, um, I think that we should either double dip at uh, at a guard position to see best available at guard position, and or I think that we should look at a different corner. Maybe like uh, everybody – I keep hearing like Stokes, but I haven't watched anything on him. I think he's more of an outside corner. Have you have you watched anything yet on uh, Mark Gilbert at Duke? Because he's got the Revis connection. He's Darrell Revis' cousin. He's been injured, I think, the last two years, maybe the last three years. But he's no, I one. I, think he, I think he ran a four three six at his or at his pro day. So they're saying he's probably like a sixth or seventh round draft pick. But you figure if he's got the, the Revis genes, if he has half of you know Revis's technique <laughs> and IQ, like and he, he'd be a team solid them, fucking player. So right. Half of Revis, well, I was thinking you know, half of Revis is the most respected cornerback. <laughs> exactly. I was th- yeah. I was thinking if we went center Creed Humphrey at 23, get the best available cornerback. I said Asante Samuel, but I don't know if he's going to make it out of the first round because he's moving up. Then I went uh, back to guard in Elijah Moore. Round? Huh? Well, you th- Asante Samuel, I think he can go late. In the, late. I'm, I'm taking first the center round? Creed Humphrey. What? You want to put you want to put 50 on that? Want to put 50 on that Asante Samuel first round shit? I'll take that you, bet. Oh, all right. So, all right. So, hold on. Fifty. Caleb Farley falls to the second round, and fifty that Asante Samuel could go in the first round. Right? Yes, sir. I'll take that. All right. All right. So that's a hundred even right, cool. total, but two yes, separate bets. Yeah. Cool. I, I think he can move right, up, cool. man. I think he's a good player, okay. and he and he's he's really good at the slot. I think he can play a little outside, but. Um, I, I, I hey don't John, know. I think he's got I, a high I bet for you. I bet yep. you fifty bucks. Tyron Waffles next show. Oh shit! <laughs> I'll take that all day. Can I double down on that? No. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Tyson. Yo, you asshole, man. You straight ass, bro. You straight ass. Yo, John, hey, look, went, John, uh, thanks for thanks for calling, man. We appreciate it. Uh, Hold on, I want to get your guys' thoughts just on, just on the pick. See what you think. I, I did Elijah Moore at our third round pick. I did Hunter Long in the third round. Oh, I'm sorry, Jabril Cox in the third round. Then I did Hunter Long in the fourth round. Chubba oh, Hubbard oh. in the fifth, uh, or uh, Chubba Hubbard in the fourth. Divine Diablo, Tyrone should like that. He's a he's a Virginia guy uh, in the fifth. 
and then I did the kicker out of Miami, and then I did the wide receiver that was at uh, Zach Wilson's pro day in, uh, for the last pick. Zach's uh, no line or whatever I think his name is. The kid that was making all the, the crazy catches, with, like the Mohawk. What do you think? Yeah, I, like, I like Hunter Long at tight end. Hubbard, good to be back. He found some good offensive talent in Italy rounds. Yeah, that's how I think. And then I, I don't know. I think Jabril Cox is going to be a pretty good linebacker. He keeps who, moving Who up. was the other offensive lineman that you took? Did you take another offensive lineman? Uh, who was the, yeah, was Elijah Moore. And who else? Uh, Elijah Moore. I think he's out of um, – Okay. Was he out of Oklahoma? I don't know too much about him. I can't wait for this fucking draft, buddy. Can't wait. Can't wait for this John, draft, th- John nah, thanks man. for calling, man. We appreciate it. Have a good night, man. All right, guys. Nah, I'm excited. Have a good night, man. I'm excited about this. I'm really excited about this right. draft. Man. I think I, I just I think we can really, really, really get turn this thing around, man. So and get some good players, man. But everybody's so so convinced take, we got to take a guard at, at 23 or center. I just I don't know. I just don't agree with that. I just don't. Next up is what Jose. do you think, Tyson? Jose, oh, what's up, man? Hey. Hey, what's up, bro? Tyra, your ear making me want to talk more. You're confusing me. <laughs> I have a fucking business. You know what, man, Jose? I you my head. guy, man. That's I have your a whole show and shit. You, you got your own head. show there. I know. I heard what he said. You yeah. got your own show now. You treat me like shit, for, uh, uh, Jose. That's how you do family, right? Do. That's fucked up, bro. I do not have my own show. I'm doing one stream. One stream. Nah, you. You're a celebrity, man. You're a celebrity, and you're turning your back on the people that were there for you in the beginning. That's some bullshit, Jose. Fuck that shit, man. It's fucked up, man. I love you, though, bro. I want to. Oh, shit. Oh, this I gave him a headache, bro. I fucked up, Jose. I gave him a whole headache, bro. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so confused. I don't even know what you're, to say. I think we're all. You're not alone, man. No. Jose, it's not it. Jose. I'm not, Jose, it's not easy keeping track of Tyrone's waffle, yeah. man. You got to really pay. You got to pay close attention, man. I'm so. They come man. fast and furious. I'm so. I love clowns. I love clowns. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both, man. Hey, Tyson. Yep. I, I want to make a bet with you. Oh, Christ. I, I, I bet you a shotgun. I can name five nicks from the 90s. That, you're going to bet me that I can name five nicks from the 90s? No. No, that I can Wait, hold on. Wait, you're going to come up. Wait, wait, wait. You're coming up with the question and want me to bet you? That means you know the answer. You came up with the question. I'm not Tyrone, man. I know how these games work, man. What the hell? Uh, uh, well, you. You're. I blame. You think I'm Waffle Wire? What is this shit? I, yeah. Yeah. But, no, because I can't name. I just. Yeah, I think that. I can name a bunch of old Knicks. Drop some yeah, see, but, five, but see, but see, five Knicks from the 90s wouldn't impress me. You can name, if you can name ten, I'd be impressed. All right, I'll name ten. All right, let's hear it. You win. Start. Okay. Houston. Uh, child. Okay. Oakley. Four. Five. Uh, 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 Oakley. Oakley was drafted by Chicago. No, but he just stays in. He's a nick of the night. We'll come a break. All right. Who was the last one? Davis. Joe Hubert Johnson. Davis? Okay. Yeah. Joe That's Johnson. Fine. I like Hubert Davis. Joe Johnson? Who Joe Johnson. Drafted. Uh, uh, Johnson. Was he a nick? Uh, Joe Johnson was like a he was like a Phoenix Sun, wasn't he? No, he was he in that too. Wait, what's what's Who? the guy from you? You and L V. 
Larry Johnson. Larry Johnson. Johnson. You blew it. Larry you Johnson. blew it. Oh, yeah. 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 Larry. <laughs> Boo. Sorry, guys. You blew it. Joe Johnson. Hey, oh, guy. hey I got my Johnson. What? Confused. Over. Did you say over? <laughs> Nothing is over until we decide it is. Uh, hey, come on. <laughs> I, I got to... Uh, I I got the last name right. You missed uh, right. Charlie Ward, Charles Smith. A lot of good ones. Yes, sir. He went to Anthony Mason. Well, Anthony Mason. Uh, Chris Dudley. Yeah, Chris Dudley. Yeah, Chris Dudley. Yeah, Chris Dudley. Yeah, Chris Dudley. Chris Dudley. Yeah, Chris Dudley. Yeah, Chris Dudley. Yeah, Chris Dudley. Yeah, Chris Dudley. He's gonna get it. so we're gonna we'll we're just gonna acknowledge that you owe me a shotgun. Yeah, we don't we don't have to rush it, but you tried. It was a valiant effort. I I owe you a shotgun. I would I would do it on the draft Monday night. Thursday. I'll be I'll, I'll be the one to make sure to remind you to. <laughs> no, you remember I, last time for me. No, I do it the draft. The draft party. That's even better. Even better. Yeah. Yeah. What's your yeah. What's your story? Nah. No, no, because you brought up uh, Anthony uh, Anthony Mason, and that's who the song the song was about. Yeah, he was a the great song. player, man. He was he he was he no, did a lot he song. did a lot where I live too. He's a really good the, dude in the community. The, no, the song I got a story to tell. By 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 Biggie Smalls was about Anthony Mason. Oh, I didn't even know that's that. That's why. That's why when you said Anthony Mason, I said I got I got a story to tell. Oh, Tyson, no, I, Tyson, no, Tyson doesn't know hip hop. Tyson doesn't know hip hop like I that. I got you. I nope. got you, Jose. Yes, sir. I got a story to tell. Hell yeah, bro. Yo, See, wonder, that's why I won't act like he knows who's on. Yo, right, 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 yo, come on, bro. Yo, one of those six foot eight Knicks players. <laughs> yo, hey, 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 Jose, grab the scarf, face to the pack. For not knowing that, what the? Tyson, you don't know. Wait, hold on, Tyra, hold on a second. Grab hold a, on, grab a Jose, scarf, Jose. Jose, don't take your anger out on me because you couldn't name the Nick players right. Don't be mad at me, man. Don't hate the player, hate the game. The game, the game set you back, not me. I don't hate the player. I like the player. <laughs> You're shotgunning, my friend. You, you, you know I got nothing but love for you. I love you too, man. But you, you want to, you want to step into the. See, you wanted to step up to the fire, and Tyrone told me to step up the heat a little bit, so now we're holding you accountable. So you tried. I, Joe Johnson. <laughs> oh. Tyrone. Oh. I, <laughs> got, I, I, I got good news for you. What's up, bro? This, you are no longer the Waffle King. Oh, Tyson, too. Somebody. I could. No, some other guy that caught into the stream to flush the taco taco that tight ends and oh, 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 Tyrone's still the waffle king. Yeah. No, Jose, Javid, 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 no, Javid struggled, struggled last night, but Tyrone waffled more times in 15 minutes tonight than Javid did the last two weeks. So it's he's still he's still the master. He still has his own truck, like Cassandra's firing out things left and right. He owns all that shit. Yo, man, yeah, I know. I like hey. to tweet. I like to tweet. <laughs> <laughs> Jose, thanks. Jose, thanks for calling, man. We appreciate it. All right. I'm gonna Have a go good night. Pro- hey, Jose, yo, yo. Hey, good analogy. To, uh, to, uh, I got a story to tell, bro. That was dope, bro. Brian, I don't you ever try to play me like that, man. Play me like that, bro. Go ahead, have, a good night, Jose. have a good night, Jose. They came to me like a chair, song I wrote. <laughs> Tyson, you don't know that song, oh. real Tyson. Dude, I don't know. I I probably know the song, but I don't. I'm terrible at lyrics to songs, dude. I have uh, no I'm fucking gonna, idea. You, so you about to get some? You about to get the Biggie one on one tour, bro? Fuck that. 
All right. We we're going to bring on Afrim. Yeah, go ahead, Tommy. What's Afram. that? Hold on. I shit. I threw a button. My bad. Fuck. I fucked up. Hold on. What's up, Afrim? What's How up, much? Bro? How are you guys doing? This sounds like you're having lots of fun. Um, Tyrone is Tyrone Ty. clearly celebrating 420 today, man. He definitely <laughs> there you go. He, <laughs> he brought his C game tonight. There's no A or B. That's C right now. Borderline D. Wow. He, he's he's having his fun. Hey, I know you guys put that thing out for the uh, favorite uh, offensive players last ten years, but I go back a little further. Uh, can I bring out uh, just a couple of players I, on offense and defense that I grew up with that uh, I I really enjoyed watching? Would that be all right? Yes, definitely. Well, yeah, I grew up with Cleco was my all-time defensive player. I mean, I grew up watching him. Um, at long, I liked Lance Mel was like my favorite linebacker on that team. Um, as far as offense, uh, just Wesley Walker and Al Toon were my favorites, and Mickey Shula was one of my favorites too. Um, but the, the the guy that I really one of the guys, the unsung heroes to me was the backup quarterback Pat Ryan. Um oh yeah. He came in yep. he came in and there's a guy who would finish the play knowing that he was gonna get smacked in the teeth. He just stood in the pocket every single time. Um he got beat hard but he came he got right back up. It was just it was just great to watch. It's it's sad but uh he was a solid backup for them. You know, behind uh, uh, Ken O'Brien, I think a little bit behind Todd. I don't know if he was back then, but anyone you know, that, those okay. were, yeah, yeah, those were. The, you know, that's when we had a balanced team. You know, offensively and defensively, and and also we were able to draft in twelve rounds too. So that that helped uh, back then. <laughs> uh, I think it, you had yeah. I think until ninety two, you couldn't you you drafted twelve rounds. I think in I think in ninety four ninety five they went to seven. Um, yep. But uh, yeah, it's good. It was it was a good time to watch them. It, it was you know they were competitive, very competitive. Uh, and plus they also had good uh, a good G, uh, GM at that time. And uh, but things change, you know. Just like you know, we guys talked about the Knicks. You had Riley, who who built a nice solid team, and then unfortunately the owner went with uh, Isaiah. And they just kept giving away number one picks for players, and it just you see what the, how long it took for them to uh, start playing better. I mean, they won again tonight. They, you know, they're really playing. That you know, they're buying into Thibodeau's uh, uh, scheme. To, uh, it, it's good to start seeing these these teams to you know finally realize what you have to do to build a team. And that's why you know I'm excited with the Jets the same way. And finally, they're they're doing something right, and and hopefully it pays off. Um, Tyrone, you keep talking about not taking Creed Humphrey at 23, uh, but let me ask you: where would where where could you where would you grab um, the center from Alabama? At, at, at what point? Um, at, at what pick? At what pick? Uh, yeah, where would I'm he thinking, actually fall? I'm would he fall at a pick that we would be able to to grab him at? I think I think he might be there at at the top of the third round, which is sixty six that we have. So yeah, you see that that, that yeah, that's that. I mean, that's the whole thing with the draft. If if the player yeah, yeah, that I know, I know, you know, know. If, you know, if he falls at twenty three, you know, then you got to grab the the best. If if it's the center that is, if it's the center that you're choosing, and he's there at twenty three, I think you grab him with twenty three. Uh, many times you guys always talk about you can't wait to drop back and, and hope the guy is going to be there. If the guy's there, and and he's he's on top of your list, you grab him. I'm also thinking that with with this guy, that if the player that he wants isn't at 23, he may trade down. Yeah, yeah, he may oh, take okay. more picks. You know, I'm I, you know I'm not sure. I'm just guessing based on 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 what he's been doing, but. Uh, it's going to be very interesting, but I, like I, I would still, uh, I've said it. I grabbed two linemen as soon as I could. I need that. I need that offensive line solid for my quarterback, for my running back, for all my schemes. At that point, I mean, it's got to. It's, well, I, you got to solidify that 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 line. I, ask him, I, I love when you call in because you always give detailed answers. Let me ask you a question. Why do you feel the sure. two? I mean, well, what, what if you what if what if he has a better view of Clark? 
you know what I'm saying, than we think that he has right now. So, you know, I mean. Well, the uh, only mean, reason is because you got, you got, um, I'm thinking he's he, every guy he's picked so far for the most part that he's given multiple years has fallen into like a 26, 26 year old, 27 year old age. Um, McGovern is I think 29, and I think uh, I don't know after next year he, he doesn't count to anything on the draft. So I'm, I'm thinking, does he want to start now with an offensive line, knowing that he just might let McGovern walk after his after next year? I'm just I'm just looking at the, at at you know how long he, I don't think he's keeping offensive linemen over a certain age. Uh, I think he wants fresh young guys to be as young as his, as close as possible to his quarterback, and then you have a, you have solid you have one solid line of meshing together year after year, um, like they did with with the Brickershaw and with Mangold. Those guys stayed together for a period of time, playing with one another. Um, Everyone keeps, you know, I mentioned this yesterday, this, this thing with the, with the wide receiver. Everyone wants to pick a wide receiver. But every year now, I mean, the college football, it's all about passing. And there's always tons of wide receivers that come up. I, with two picks next year, I guarantee you probably get a, a, a wide receiver just as good as anyone coming out this year. I mean, they just seem to pop up. Every year we always hear something new about another guy. Focus on, on building that line and, and adding maybe uh, um, a, a tight end as another weapon to uh, um, give this kid as many weapons as possible. I know, and I agree with Ty. I'd rather, I'd rather win 43 to 35 than to, to lose uh, 17 to 14. I want that, you know, because I think he could do whatever he, he can with this defense with a couple of extra players um, maybe next year. And Bill, and then I think we'll have a really balanced team, uh, and something to look forward to year after year, a competitive team. That's how I look. So let me so so let me ask you this: Assuming that we are going quarterback at two, and let's just say that we do take two offensive linemen at some point between twenty three, thirty four, and the two third round picks, you have two other picks somewhere in there between wide receiver, uh, corner, running back, tight end. Which of those needs are you pushing back into the fourth round or beyond? In the fourth year, um, you're saying what? The, what do I? What would I be picking on the third round? So you have, you, you're thinking you're that wide receiver, or tight end would be in the third round. Within your yeah, you're taking two offensive linemen and a quarterback within your top five picks. So you have two other picks that you could use, whether it's again twenty three, thirty four, or your third rounders. So what needs are you addressing with those two other picks, and which needs are you okay kind of pushing you know into round four or later? Round four, I would go uh, um, a slot corner. A slot corner, like um, I keep reading about, and seeing this guy Kerry Vincent Jr. with with very 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 quick, very fast, but he plays that corner slot uh, a lot uh, very well. Um, I would go with uh, a running back as well in the later rounds, like a Chuba Hubbard, a Chuba Hubbard, or. Uh, if he, he's there or that, uh, was that uh, Gainswell? I forget, is, is that the way he, his last name is, Gainswell? Uh, yeah, Gainswell. Yeah, he, they seem, in you know, a lot of things I'm reading, they're very high on him. Um, you can go on that route. Um, this um, Adebo, um cornerback as well, there's a lot of talk about him. I mean, or, you know, you go and if you want to start uh, – Getting uh, guys behind offensive linemen that are getting old. You got like the guy from Notre Dame, the was Aaron Banks, I think his name is. He's another player. Um, remember, you, you got also you got twelve picks next year. So I mean, yeah, you could sure. really uh-huh. you could really do a number to this team in two years. You know, yeah, sure indeed. It's a, sure yeah, indeed. It's a lot of picks. You know, everyone wants to get everything done this year. It seems like, and and hope they 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 make the playoffs. But you know, we also have to be realistic that you know um, it's going to take a couple of years. You guys see how well this team gels together with the new to see who survives the 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 the, uh, the training camp and who's going to get cut, who 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 can uh, flourish in this scheme and who can't. 
You know what I'm saying? So, you know, yeah, I, I don't we could care only, about yeah. addressing everything this year. I just want to make sure that my quarterback's in a good enough position to Absolutely. Uh, yeah. at least solve you know, just, that side. But like you said, you know, if you're losing high scoring games, that that's fine. As long as your quarterback's developing and growing. You know, exactly. Yeah, as long as you make it, you make it, you make it safe for him. Make it safe for him. You know, yep. we'd learn from our mistakes. And it's a bunch. And I also, also think that no one, no one said this all night, though. But I think that you know, I really see Joe Douglas taking a tackle. That I think that he might go with Fant for one more season and get a young tackle in the draft that he could, you know, let sit and grow and uh, step into the offensive line next year. But um, I think that McGovern will probably be our center, just because the simple fact is you don't want to have a rookie quarterback. And a rookie center, you know what I'm saying? So I, I think that's you know yeah. that's the really you know. And don't get me wrong, I think Cree Humphrey, Cree Humphrey, if he comes, if they do drag Cree Humphrey, he's playing guard his first year anyway. You know what I'm saying? Because I do, I don't so, think. But well, listen, uh, why not let them compete just, for the job? And the loser takes the guard position. Well, I think they're high on McGovern. I think that you know what I'm saying. I think they're looking at him as you know as as a leader of the line. So I think that I think McGovern definitely is going to be our center. I think we take Curry Humphrey. He's definitely going to be a guard, but I think that I think Joe Douglas likes guys on the line that can that can play no. multiple positions. Like you know, maybe right. grabbing that kid out of Michigan that tackle that you know what I'm saying can also play guard. You know what I'm saying? You like guys like that, so when you get in the pants, you can move guys around. You know what I'm saying? If I yes. had a choice, you know what I'm saying? Why Davis is that, that's probably the guy I want the most. I think he's plug and play right now. I think he could be. I think he'd be had at 34. I think he could be, maybe be had at 66 with his injury. You know, I just think this kid, he can, you know, this kid's going to be a straight, he's going to be a, a, a great guard for the Knicks. You know what I'm saying? What injury does he have? Because I saw that he has an injury, but I never got dwelled uh, into he got hurt. He got hurt. he got hurt in the game. I don't know exactly what it is. I don't think it's nothing major because what I heard, that he'll be ready for um, – training camp, so, you know, I don't know if it's nothing major, but a lot of guys are falling yeah. back off of that because these guys get hurt. It's like we were talking about Farley early, earlier with his back, you know what I'm saying? If his back wasn't hurt, he would be. He would definitely be off the board early. So, um, yeah. but like I said, I... Yeah, he was, I, he was, he was I, I agree with you, he was touted, he was, t- before his injury, he was touted the best cornerback in, in, in the in the draft. Thank you, thank uh, you. Buddy. I remember I reading that. that. Yeah, that I, that yeah, I, I agree, that. until his back injury. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, with, yeah, I we're not talking. Uh, we're not talking legs. We're talking back, and I think that's that adds more uh, Thanks, to him dropping the game. further. Changes the game a little yeah. bit. But I also, too, though, like like you said earlier, you know what I'm saying? We have to, we have 12 picks this year, bro. You're like like we can if Joe Douglas hits this just right, because I mean, I think what everyone forgets is, man, we understand that you know everyone wants to fix everything at one time. Like you know, if he wants to fix the O line, I'm fine with that. You know what I'm saying? If he wants to fix, you know, I mean. If we want to fix, you know, if the O line is his whole focus on the draft, and he takes four linemen, I could care less. Because I know that we want to make sure that our, our young quarterback is protected and he has time. You know what I'm saying? And we can have a good yeah. running game. I think that helps more than anything. So I'm definitely with. I, I'm in agreement with everything everyone is saying. I really don't want to think. Of, I don't want to think of receiver in the first round unless somebody just absolutely can't miss falls. You know what I'm saying? I just I just don't want to do that. Right. I'd rather go O line or cornerback. That's just what I, I, I think I would rather do. Or, or is, there you know, you, the, the kid. is there any chance uh, you could see a tackle at twenty three if a guy like Darisaw or Tevin Jenkins? Is oh yeah, there? yo, definitely. I mean, definitely because I yeah. feel like you know what I'm saying. I feel like if 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 you had to, you know what I'm saying. I, I think that I think that if he did that, he would he would either kick. See, I don't know if you could kick fans inside though. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the. I think he's definitely taking a tackle, but I don't know if he's going to take one in the, in the first two rounds. I think maybe third round. He's really gonna grab someone that 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 can be good. This needs a little bit of time to develop. But I mean, like you said, right. I'd rather him grab a book in. If, there, if there's a book in guy plug in that could be there for the next ten years, well, well, back then I'm with it. But you know, our outside wasn't our problem last year. Our inside was the biggest issue. But you know, yeah. that goes to coaching and scheme too, though. So maybe they're looking at it with a different scheme, a different coach. Maybe the guys can you know, be coached up and play better. So, but I, I definitely think that that was our weakness last year. Was our was our guard play? That was that was a downfall of, of our team last year, definitely. Yeah, like I said yesterday, I think when when once he picks that twenty, if he picks the twenty third pick, I think that will dictate what he's going to do for the rest of the draft. I think. Uh, but but ain't it nice though? We got. Ain't it nice we got two first round picks this year and next year? Ain't that beautiful though? Yeah. I mean, doesn't that just make you feel good? like you know that well, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think that twenty the twenty yeah. third pick scares me more than anything. And I, the, yeah. the Zach Wilson does too as well. 
Wait, the twenty third pick scares you more than the number two pick? No, no, no. I, no, I was saying both of those scare me, but <laughs> the twenty third is your top, your top, your top five picks in the draft, man. You know what I'm saying? They're not necessarily locks, but you know what I'm saying. You expect certain things from them, but pick twenty three kind of just kind of be it could be hit or miss. You know what I'm saying? Like these guys, you know, that 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 just kind of scares me. I mean, I think that picking Zach Wilson is the right pick. Pick number two. I definitely, I definitely will say that. 23, I don't know which way we could go. So, in so many different directions we could go that, you know what I'm saying, kind of has me on edge wondering what we're going to put in that, what we're going to get in that position, who's going to fall, who's going to be there. We know we're getting that, too. You know what I'm saying? We know we're going to be there, too. I think the last 10 years has scared the shit out of all of us, though. We're so afraid that we're going to make the, 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 the bad pick that no matter Barely. who's the GM, <laughs> you know, and I think we just got to get away from that. And, you know, we start seeing things getting better. Let's let's have confidence in this guy and and yes, hope sir, for the best listen, and, and be positive. That's it, brother Anthem. Listen, I'm coming around. Darren Lee, D. Milner, <laughs> that shit scares anybody, bro. Anybody. Uh, yeah. That shit. What's what's the what's the prior the uh, the, the safety we took prior? Bro, yeah, Calvin Pryor. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yes, man. Like that yeah, shit yeah. just it's scary, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you always uh, you always anticipate Cold a bad things? pick. Yo, know, Copels, mm-hmm. right? I mean, yo, know, we taking like four first round picks uh, aren't even in the fucking league anymore. That's crazy. I was at the I was at the draft in ninety seven or ninety uh, eighty nine when they I was at the Marriott Marquis where they picked Jeff Lagerman on the first pick. Yeah, you know, that was a waste of a pick. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's just... gentlemen, thank you for the for letting me back on and. Uh, I can't wait till next Thursday. It's going to be great. Yes, sir. Always can't a pleasure, wait, brother. Man. You have a great night, bro. You too. Be well. Have a good night. You too, brother. Tyson fall asleep? Did we lose? We got uh, another call. Over there. Yeah, so let's, let's just bring the next guest on. It's uh, 516 area code. We'll take a chance. Hopefully it's not a prank. What's going on, dude? <laughs> what's going on? Hey, what's going on, guys? All right, what's going on, bro? Yeah, not much. I uh, just want to talk a little bit about the Jets, what's going to happen in the draft. Uh, what are you, your guys' opinions on uh, uh, what the Jets do at two? Um, uh, so just want to get into it a little bit with, uh, with Zach Wilson at number two. Um, what are you guys hearing and seeing from, you know, from, I guess, Twitter and everything? And um, I just haven't been following that much lately. And also, is there a chance that Wilson can go to the Jets at two? Is that even a possibility? Or because from everything I've been seeing and hearing um, uh, as of, uh, what was it, this morning, I've just seen a lot of things saying uh, Matt Jones is going to be the guy who's going to San Francisco. He is a guy Shanahan has been loving. Um, so I'm not sure if that's 100% true. Um, but what do you guys think? I mean, unfortunately, uh, and uh, I'll, I'll let Tyrone say what he wants to say, but, I mean, I feel like it's going to be Zach Wilson. You know, at this point, I'm trying to talk myself into him and trying to convince myself. You know, I, I get all the things that the, the scouts are touting. He's got a quick release. Um, you know, he's able to make some plays with his feet, good athleticism, good in the pocket, um, crazy arm talent. So I'm trying to talk myself into, you know, all the positives with him. Um, I still have some questions. I still think Justin Fields is a better overall athlete. I still think he has room to grow as a passer. I think he's a smarter quarterback. Um, and I think he's going to be an absolute leader at this level. Um, and I think he's more or less like a, a mini Lamar Jackson where, you know, he's not going to be as dynamic with his feet, but he's going to be able to get you, you know, a, a lot of first downs and a lot of big plays with his feet and probably be a better passer than Lamar is. So that would be my preference at two, but I think the writing is on the wall based on, you know, everything that people are reporting that it is going to be Zach Wilson with the second pick. Yeah, I think, I, I think Wilson too. Um, uh, you know, I mean, like I said, like you know, I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't, I didn't know much about the kids until you know, you're, you know, this year. And I'll be honest with you. So, um, I didn't think we'd be in the market for another. I didn't think we'd be in the market for another quarterback. You know, now that we are, you know, out of the quarterbacks that that are out right now, you know, what I'm saying prime time, you know, definitely, you know, definitely has his, his opinion about you know who's the second best quarterback. You know, what I'm saying, but after everything I've seen with Wilson, I just I, I like the kid. I really do. Um, I think that no matter who our quarterback is, you have to be put in a position to be great. And um, you can't be great without an offensive line. You can't be great without a without a good coordinator. And I think that for the first time in a long time, you know, you're going to have great pieces around them. And I think for the first time, 
we're going to have a quarterback that's going to be able to come in and be in a situation where he has talent around him. And um, they, they're not going to ask him to do everything. They're going to give him some help and some protection. So, um, you know, if Wilson is the guy, I'll be, I'll be happy, happy with that, bro. I'll really be honest with that. I think that, um, just, you know, um, I think Sam got a raw deal. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to say that. But at the end of the day, you know, it's time to move forward. We got the right. We got. We got. I'm not. I'm not going to just say this because Joe Douglas. You know, what I'm saying I'm not going to, you know, say that he's he, he's done everything correctly. But I, I do like the yeah. direction that we're going, and this draft is going to tell a lot, man. This draft is going to be, you know, what I'm saying, you know, what we have, you know, what I'm saying, and how far we are. Next year is going to be another great great chance to get better. So, um, you know, I know we keep saying rebuild, but. It seems like the rebuild could be over in two years. You know what I'm saying? That you know we could actually compete this year, and um, so I'm happy with it. How do you feel about Zach Wilson? How do you feel? I mean, I feel the see the thing with him with Wilson is that I, I that's nothing against him. I think that he can be a very good quarterback in this league. I think that RPO offenses are basically the trend now uh, in the NFL. But I do think that um, uh, that. Uh, uh, Fields is getting uh, a little bit, I would say, overlooked. i um, not sure if that's the right word, but um, I've just, you know, from seeing, uh, I even saw something about Fields where he took some IQ test. He got a 130 on it. Apparently, uh, Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen both got 108. Not sure if that means anything, um, but the fact that he scored that high on a test, um, they said it has something to do, this test has something to do with, like, playbook reads that the quarterback is able to, uh, you know, adjust and be able to read uh, different playbooks and pick up on things. So the fact that field scored the highest in a test like that, to me, is very, like, telling, eye-telling. And, um, you know, I mean, he is getting a lot of hype, uh, Wilson. And who knows? Like, we can come draft day and, you know, crazy things can happen where, the, you know, the Jets can take field at two and everybody would be like, oh, we all thought it was, you know, Wilson. So I'm not 100% sure that, that number two pick is a lock, but there's, there's almost like without certainty at this point that it's going to be him. So, um, you know, if it's him, I'll, I'll definitely be fine with it. You know, I think they just had to move on from Sam. Um, you know, they just didn't, they never gave him the sporting cast. They never, you know, let him reach his full potential. And I think Douglas, you know, he wanted a new quarterback. You know, he didn't want to feel the pressure of holding on to Sam, nor did he need to um, in that, in that matter. And, uh, you know, I just think that, Joe Douglas was the guy that the Jets needed because, again, it's again, I it is early to say that he's the guy, but just from seeing what he's been doing, just the draft picks he's been getting, he seems to know what he's doing more so than McCagnin and more so than Idzik. I actually personally met John Idzik, and you know, boy, do these guys when you actually meet them in real life, they actually like, you know, they try to personify who they really are and you know certain things like that. But um, I think. I think that Joe Douglas is really, you know, real and authentic. Whereas like McCagney and Idzik were just, in my opinion, phony guys, guys that are just trying to get, you know, in and, you know, not really, you know, prioritizing what the team actually needs. Like, I, like this is what I don't understand. Like when you're a GM, you come, you're coming into an organization, let's say John Idzik, like you didn't, like he didn't evaluate like the history of this team, what they need. Like this, this, this just mind boggles me. Like when you're coming into a team, like you're say you're a general manager, how do you not assess what the, what the history, what the problems are? Like how do you not adjust that in the draft? How do you only go defense? Like that just doesn't make sense. Like what do you guys think? No, I agree with you. <laughs> I, I think that sometimes yeah. they try to, you know, like you know, certain players fall and you get enamored by the player, but you know, what I'm saying you need other needs. I think that you know, it's been it's just been so much for what we needed for so long. I mean. We've missed on so many draft picks, and we've missed on so many talented players in the later rounds that, you know, that's been our biggest thing that we only really – I remember you guys remember the, the second-round curse. You know, I think Marcus May kind of broke that. Other than that, man, you know, every every pick we took in the second round, bro, yeah. it just sucked. Like, when we traded that for Sam and we gave up those two second-round picks, I remember someone put on Twitter, was like, why? We were going to blow them anyway. You know what I'm saying? So that's just what we have done for so long. Um but um, you know, it's just it's just getting close. It's just time, man. Like I, I think it's time to, to start moving in the right direction. You know, and I don't care about someone saying we're a laughing stock. I don't mean shit to me. I just think that we have to get the right players in, and um, you know, and we got we got the right guys in. I really like what I really like the direction Joe Duck is taking us step by step, piece by piece. You know, getting young guys in here that want to be here, that that want to be a, a jet. 
You know what I'm saying? What do you think, Primetime? I can respect Joe Douglas' approach. I think it's the approach that the organization needs, you know, the, the just the complete rebuild and starting fresh, building through the draft. But now comes the hard part, and that's using these 21 picks over the next two years and actually hitting on them, hitting on a quarterback, hitting on an offensive line, hitting on weapons around your quarterback, and actually building your team. You know, at this point, I have a lot of trust in Salah. I think he's going to be a good player's coach, a good motivator. He's going to have that defense, you know, flying around. So I think that's something that we have to look forward to. Now it's just a matter of can Joe Douglas actually be the draft guru that he's touted to be. And if he can, if he can find us that quarterback and add pieces for Salah, I think we're in pretty good shape. And this can turn around much faster than some people think. But if we screw this pick up, and, you know, we're, we're kind of, you know, going through the, the, the hamster wheel like Fireman Ed talks about sometimes, where, you know, every three years we're kind of starting all over again, new quarterback, new coach, new GM. Like, you know, you, you got to hit at some point. You got to hit on the quarterback, and you got to find the right coach. So we're, we're hoping this is it. But at, at this point, right now, at this moment, everybody's unproven. So th- there's a lot to like, but there's also a lot to question still. So. Definitely, definitely. I That's do think definitely. that, you know, it's – it's it's about time, you know, especially a guy like Douglas, where you see what he's done. Around, he's huh? been with he's been with Baltimore, right? He's been with Philly, so you kind of you know grasp, you kind of understand that he knows what he's doing, which is phenomenal. Like finally they they can. But to me, it's just crazy that it took so long, like after all these years, for them to actually find a guy that can like you know get it right. Like, like I don't understand how you like get these let these guys you know sign these guys to a contract like. It just my boggles me. But anyways, I do think that um, this is an important draft, and I do think that what Tyrone said about having two first-round picks back-to-back years, that's that's definitely going to get overlooked by a lot of people. And, it's like, you know, if they can hit on this Jamal Adams draft pick, I mean, they won next year regardless. I mean, Jamal Adams was just a total, uh, you know, there's so many words I can describe him, but honestly, like, just the guy was not meant for New York. He couldn't handle the spotlight. He knows it, but everybody knows it, but – um, you know, it's it's about time. I think this team is going to get back on track. And, um, you know, there's still a lot of uh, talent on this team, um, you know, in the secondary with Davis. And, you know, there are a lot of guys that still are fighting for, for spots here. So should be interesting. You know, can't wait, obviously, for uh, for preseason football to just, you know, to get started already. Um, and, um, you know, looking forward to just football. Be here before you know hey, it, man. Great call, dude. Yes, sir. Hey, have a good night, bro. Appreciate you, man. Thanks. You too, Tyrone, and uh, prime time. Tyson, I don't know if you're on, but I appreciate you too. Take it easy, guys. Have right, a good night, man. Bro. I appreciate you. Have a good, and have a good night, bro. Well, prime that was time. an interesting two hours, man. Yes, sir, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, you know, I, I was so I was so looking forward to this draft, man. Um, I want to try my best, man, to to be on for the draft, the draft YouTube show, man. Like I said, man, y'all, what y'all been doing, bro? Content, bro, I love it. You know what I'm saying? I know we joke around and have all the fun we want to, man, but it's all love. We all love the Jets, and we just all want this to work the right way. I mean, just, you know, like competitive football, man. I don't care how good we are. I don't care what our record is. I just want to be competitive night in, night out. I want to be able to say that we can go in the game, we can beat any team on any given Sunday and see good Jet football. That's something that we haven't had in a while. We start getting young players in and, and watch these guys grow and, you know, homegrown talent, man. You know what I'm saying? Watching guys get to their second contract, fixing his offensive line, fixing his cornerbacks, get better playmakers in. You know, getting somebody like a Leon Washington in, these explosive guys that just get it done. You feel me? No, no doubt, dude. I mean, that's why we're all so frustrated at this point. We've been watching how many years of bad football, bad drafting, you know, and latching on to hopes of different quarterbacks and GMs and head coaches. It'll it'll break most fans, So. You know, we're all here again, you know, getting ready for another draft, getting ourselves hyped up for it. We're all going to be there, you know, come August at training camp. We'll be there in September at MetLife, you know, coming to all the games. So we're not going anywhere. So hopefully they finally get it right. We we put in the time. We put in the dues. We fucking deserve it. So, Tyrone, your parting shots. My parting shots tonight is, man, yo, everybody enjoy 420. Be careful, man. Yo, get ready for this draft. We all <laughs> we almost there, and it's showtime, baby. It's showtime. One week away, baby, next Thursday. Let's go. Thank you again to everyone that called in tonight. Thank you to everyone that's been interacting with us on YouTube on our Monday shows. We definitely appreciate it. Um, we might do something live uh, during the middle of the week this week. We'll see what happens. Um, but if not, we'll be back live next week, Monday night, 830, as well as Tuesday nights. So, again, thank you guys, and we'll talk to you soon.
One week till the draft. Yes, sir. Jets up, baby. I'm sure this is where I'm supposed to play the Jets chant, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good night, man. Have a good night, bro. Go.